the college basketball experience, sweet 16 reaction show and elite eight preview and picks episode on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by cut cut is a peer to peer social betting platform. That's us based and available in 40 different States. Head to head to cut.com or K U T T dot com, that is, and use the promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pickup for a chance to win a hundred times the amount of money you can enter in college hoops, MLB, NHL, NBA, all that stuff, and more. Sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN to get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by a hall of fame bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the hall of fame bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. People remember as always folks to let it ride. What's up everybody. This is Cameron Crowe from Loyola Chicago Ramblers. And you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Shout out to the broad stop. Thank you guys. Experience. <laughs> Sweet 16. And Elite Eight preview, as well as uh, Pick Dundee dis- bracket destruction episode. Uh, <laughs> if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, well, kind of tip my hand. Uh, my <laughs> name is Colby Swing and Database Dad, aka Pick Dundee. That's not a pick, this is a pick. He was raised in the land down under. Where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. And you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. Um, I was hot early in the day. I was feeling good about life. And I started betting everything. <laughs> kind of ate shit all throughout the night. Even got really foolish and took the St. Louis Cardinals money line against the Dodgers. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I got to give some street cred to uh, the pussy pack in a minute. I am joined. Hopefully you're watching youtube.com slash the college experience. Get on over there. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. I miss talking to you folks. This is therapy for me. Uh, give it up for former, former video coordinator for hall of fame, coach Bob Huggins and Frank Martin host of the big 12 college experience host of the ride and rush show. Give it up for Ryan McIntyre, AKA Mana Lan Mac. How you doing, man? I've been better. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, I love this time of year, but it's I mean it, it's no secret it hasn't been my favorite tournament, and tonight was definitely the cherry on top with that ending. So hey, we're here, so let's go. Mac tonight. Come on, make it Mac tonight. And you know, we uh two we're 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 previewing the Elite Eight. We need more than just two voices. I three voices, even because Beanick is here. Don't worry. He's not, he's not out in the LeBaron showing old Susan Dearborn. All right. Um, What's going on with everybody zooming into my command center? And that was, screenshots? well, there was some suspect shit <laughs> on the wall. The there. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, what? We got, you're, you guys are flexing it, a Playboy happened, magazine with a dude it, on it. That's it uh, multiple uh, times <laughs> in the last few days. You, you want to know who that dude is? My dad, when he was 20. Whoa. I still, so I (laughs) guess, I guess that's a decent excuse. If like, if I was on playboy, I would probably keep the, the magazine, but it's, (laughs) it's still awkward for people to come in the house and see it. Right. Like if you just see your dad, like I have no idea, at least frame it. So you don't have to like potentially open up the magazine. Right. It is framed, but for some reason it's sitting on that, uh, 
your dad and your dad and Hef, style. your dad and Hef for pals. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I, I couldn't tell Yo, you. Well, I mean, what the fuck are we doing right now? No, go, go get that story. Wake him up. <laughs> And and as that <laughs> wake him up. Dad, what yes, was that it is story? You, are you pals with half or not? I need to know this. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, I've never tried to even open it. Never tried to go in there. I don't. Well, know I sure hope so. I don't know if it's the legit deal. I wouldn't be opening up that shit either. I don't know if it's the legit deal or there was uh you know <laughs> something else uh, like if he this was like a photo booth type thing and it was a joke or whatnot. I have no idea what the backstory is behind mm. it. Or if he was mm. legit on the magazine cover, I have no clue. Okay. But well, yeah, look, uh, just we have kind of funny that people are zooming into like, no, that was hilarious. That was fucking hilarious. It, and I know. Someone, so so whoever said it was, a, whoever said, uh, I should, I should know. It was this. Keith. It was Keith. Yeah. Who said you got a Zach Eady, uh, playboy magazine. <laughs> <laughs> very hilarious Keith Landry, right um here. yeah shout out to keith he's <laughs> he's always the man um so uh so yeah look three is not enough uh, you know f- let's let's bring in i was in las vegas we were in las vegas last week and i had the opportunity to run into someone from the chat and several whiskeys later <laughs> he said Dude, I would love to come on the show at some point. What do I got to do to come on the show? And I said, nothing, nothing. All you got to do is show up next week and click the link. I'm going to send you. And uh, this is that. So folks, shout out to this guy. I like to think he's a college basketball handicapper, but maybe it's everything because he was talking baseball pre-episode. Give it up for Cody Fraser. How you doing, brother? Good boys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, What a round of games tonight we had. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh. I mean, I don't know what side what, Cody, we're going to get your reaction for each game. I want to know what sides you were on on this. And by the way, thanks for always being in the chat and kicking ass. You did donate to Noah's prostitution fund. And uh, so, you know, we're, 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 I got the bet detective on the case wondering what's going on there with that situation, but uh, it's good to have you on the show, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming out to Vegas, kicking it with us. And you thought I was not going to do, you thought I was a drunken idiot. And I, I am a drunken idiot, <laughs> but you thought I wasn't going to remember this. I, 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 well, I, I, yeah, we're good. We're good. After we got cut off at the bar, I just thought, you know, it was going to be, uh, I thought <laughs> I it was just drunk off. talk, but, uh, <laughs> by the way, I started the hooker fund for Noah and the LeBaron fund tonight. <laughs> so, uh, two that for is two true. Here. That is, that is, I appreciate that. And shout out to someone who DM me saying, if we buy Noah, the LeBaron and put an SGPN decal on the thing, it's a write-off for the company. It's promotion. I think we, I think we got something good going, but there is way too many people behind this trying to help (laughs) this thing out. There's just way too many people. How do you not want to ride around in Michigan in the LeBaron with the drop? That's what I'm saying. Are you kidding me? Come on, dude. What do you think Kid Rock did before he started getting ass? <laughs> <laughs> Going around Michigan, probably in a LeBaron. That probably wasn't his. And uh, look, own own one of your own. Go shoot up some Bud Lights, <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks. If you're wondering who the fuck you're listening to, uh, you're listening to SGPN Network radio, essentially. Yes. You're listening to the college basketball experience on SGPN. SGPN is home to 20 plus gambling podcasts, all completely free, by the way, in honor of March madness, this week's featured shows are the sports gambling podcast, the flagship SGPN show hosted by Ryan, real money, Kramer and Sean stacking the money green. Those guys have uh, picked every tournament game against the spread since 2012. And of course you're brought to you by us, the college basketball experience with pick Dundee. Uh, myself, um, Moneyline Mac, Noah Beanick, and they continue their unmatched coverage of college basketball betting. Uh, so s- subscribe today to the college ba- uh, basketball experience at the sports gambling podcast, wherever you get your podcast. It's always weird to read shit about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Like I, I, I have this script I'm supposed to follow. And it's like, well, I mean, I, I enjoy talking about myself in third person. But can we talk about this, uh, Coach Z, real quick? He goes, Did Noah get boots on the ground in Detroit? No, the NCAA turned down both myself, also Colby, and the SGPN guys in LA. So 
Don't take it up on us. Take it up on the NCAA. The, look, they don't like the fact that we 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 call we a spade grind. a spade. <laughs> we call a spade a spade. That too. Look, they they they, they want safe people being like, I know, uh, you know, uh, NC State played a terrible game, and you know, like you you know, we we come out having a whiskey, saying, "Oh, fuck you," right? <laughs> and uh, that's that's us. Yeah. Some like us, some don't. I'm okay with that. All right. Um, shout out to GBO Farms giving us twenty dollars. Here's uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, YouTube.com slash the College Experience. Um, Patty C. Uh, yeah, I, GBO Farms basically saying that uh, Noah's going to go get some beaver. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Let's get that thing going. Patty C is a panty dropper too. Uh, he is known on the streets of Tijuana as a panty dropper. Um, so let's get into this stuff because uh, and shout out to GBO Farms. He's the man. Oh yeah, the nice beaver clip. I gotta, I gotta use your nice fucking beaver. Yeah, I mean the well, naked gun stuff. I'm just unprepared over here. You can't. I'm sorry, win. I just lost a bunch of money. Nice beaver. But uh, okay, the first game of the day. I was feeling fantastic because I did take the pussy pack. We got a pre. Uh, we got a recap last night too. Yeah, but we should do the tonight's first. Then, yeah. uh, pussy pack went sixty-seven fifty-eight. I feel like they never trailed this game. Um, if so, it was very early, I believe. And Marquette, I, this is. I'm actually really frustrated. Not only because NC State succeeded, I won money on NC State. I took it money line and the points. But I hate seeing NC State being successful. And at the same time, I realized this could have been Colorado had Tad Boyle just coached a basketball game correctly. Um, I was a skeptic on Marquette all year. I feel like they should have lost last round. Once again, they still outplayed Colorado. That's on Colorado, in my opinion. But uh, the Pussy Pack dominated this game. Uh, Marquette made a little bit of a run late. Um, but you can't go. They went four for 31 from three Marquette did. That's how you lose a game. You but we do the, one better. They went 14 that? to 24 for the fucking free throw line. Yeah. Yeah. And the pussy pack is heading back to the elite eight for the first time since 86. And Jimmy V was there. Unbelievable. That this is happening this year. And I have to eat this shit. The only good thing I can do by eating this shit is I started to buy in the past couple games. I started Colby. to buy in. Yeah, and this yeah. is a good tip here from Jake Brubaker as well. The best thing you ever did was bring me on the show, so at least I could d- d- dialect or uh, whatever the fucking word is. <laughs> yeah, I could move, bring move the attention th- away from me. Yeah, to yeah. talk about you're, Big you're Twelve. You're off the hook with all this. I mean, the only thing I'm missing is this fucking pit team being in here, and I would really have to eat it. <laughs> um, sh- what sh- the fuck. Yeah. Shout out to Jake though for giving us ten bucks, and here's to Max Fun for betting against the ACC all tournament. <laughs> Look, dude, NC State was the better team tonight, though. This was no gimmick. They, were. they yeah. deserved it. They it's whooped their ass dominated. from start to finish. What's that, I Cody? I said NC State dominated. I mean, they only had Marquette only had 24 in the first half, and Tyler Kolick had 14 of them. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, DJ Burns and uh, Horn. Horn had nine at the half with two quick fouls. Uh, I feel like DJ Burns did all his damage in the first half. He had five assists at the at halftime, so yeah, didn't be much uh, in the second. I mean, NC no, State though was also they shot fifty percent from the free throw line. NC State did too. Actually, Marquette yeah. shot better at the free throw line than State did. Mac, um, yeah. it's just it's actually when you dive into the numbers, it's almost more puzzling than you think. Because <laughs> Marquette uh, out often had more offensive rebounds than NC State, nine to six. NC State had less points in the paint than Marquette. I really think the only thing I can really, uh, you know, and NC state had more turnovers. The only thing is the three point line. It's kind of one of, this is why stat sheets, you know, can be deceiving sometimes. You know what I mean? Like you look at the stat sheet. If you were to not see the score, you'd go down. If you were to ignore the three pointers, you would go down and say, well, I think Marquette might've played the better game. They probably won, but here they are the pussy pack, the hottest team and shout out to the bet detective CJ Sullivan. Cause he was the one to tell me. Yeah. You gotta you gotta just accept that NC State's on this ride because that it's, look, I've I've started to, to do it this. Too. I was like, "Fuck you, CJ." No, they're not. He didn't quite say accept. He told you to submit. 
There's yes. two differences there. Yes. And look, I did. I listened to it. I, I cashed in. All right. So I, I understand that I hate them, but I also like money. So um, I joined in here. I'm eating shit, but uh, I think tide turning. I see, as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn. It's easy to see a tide turn. Did I say those words? Go pussy pack. Did I say those words? Um, Mac, uh, what's your thoughts on this, on this whole game and the pussy pack in general? I feel like I watch Arizona Clemson uh, on repeat watching this game. I feel like it was the exact same fucking game. It was Marquette's shot selection was so fucking bad. Some of these higher seeds, this tournament, like they'll get down eight or nine points with 15 minutes left. And you would think that there's 30 seconds left with some of these shots that they're taking and just the complete panic and tightness that these teams play with. I mean, Kolek was good. Col- I-, I actually thought Kolek was the only guy that somewhat kept him in the game. But, I mean, Joplin, I don't know if he freaking was out at the club with Caleb Love and fucking R.J. Davis last night. He couldn't throw it in the fucking ocean. And he was wide open the entire night. Um I I'm dumbfounded that at this NC state run. I, how, I, how far I, I could they go, I, man? How far could they go? Dude. Well, you can hit me with it. I think they could win the fucking national championship. Dude. Well, the Jesus only team that's God. ever won five wins in five days is UConn in what? 2011. Yeah. NC state. Fuck. Why can't they win it? I hate they're, saying they're, it. I hate they're it. more talented that yeah. like part of the allure that is NC state is like, this is why I call them the pussy pack is yeah. historically football, basketball, even baseball. They have a bunch of good players. I can remember watching Tory Holt and Jamie Barnett scorch Florida state. And you're thinking uh, Florida state went to play for the national championship that year. But you look back at NC state and they're like, how the fuck were you 500? You had, you had yeah. good players. You know what I mean? Like it's Philip rivers. They had Philip. I mean, basketball the same way. I mean, they've had good players and they just fuck it up. Um, but it's all coming together here and it's making me eat shit on a nightly basis. Well, even though I bet and I made cash, I have a million DMS. That's so funny. Uh, a bunch of people have DM me and I didn't answer. And mainly there were non NC state fans, non NC state related DMS. And I apologize for not answering, but I had so many NC state fans DMing me that I was like, I'm just going to answer these in like, May, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I had so many of them that I was like, yeah, I'm punting right now, guys. I'm punting. It's, it's fourth down. I'm fucking punting. Um, he's just waiting for them to lose. Then he's yeah, going to go through. Yeah. <laughs> so, eh, if you're not first, you're last in, in the words of Ricky Bobby. That's the um, Colby response. When NC state loses <laughs> inevitably, he'll just respond. Ha ha ha. And true. Then he'll move along. True. Because if, if you, here's the thing, if you're not first, you're last. Yeah. If you're not first, you're last. Apparently, uh, Cody, uh, did you who'd you take in this game? And can NC State win the national championship, or, or how far can they go? Should I ask? I did bet NC State plus the points. Um, I mean, like you said, they've underachieved most of the year. Uh, Morcel is a big shot taker and maker in the second half. I know his stat line didn't look real great, but he uh, he showed up. Uh, like I said, DJ Burns faded big time in the second half, but I mean, hell, he's 330 pounds. Like I can't expect <laughs> him to play 40 minutes, but DJ Horn came through. Um, I mean, it, it helps when Joplin and Cam, uh, Cam Jones are three of 19 from three Joplin's zero for seven. Thank I mean, you. there was yeah. three wide open threes in the corner for Joplin. He just doesn't hit. I mean, yeah. Cole yeah. doing everything he can do out there, but at the end of the day, he's John Stockton. He's not going to score 35 and, He's not going to have a triple double. Like you got to have guys around him. And no, NC State is not going to the <laughs> national championship. <laughs> Thank but you. But if Thank the you. line's big enough, I might bet them again. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they, they might cover again. So, I, I mean, they're it. playing really good basketball. They Look, I understand good. the ACC championship, the Louisville, the Virginia games. They probably should have lost both. But it's all Kenny Payne's fault. He had yes. him beat. He fucking Dude, had them beat. The baked-in <laughs> toilet bowl three in the ACC tournament. And Greg Sankey, you piece of shit out there, all right, that says we don't. We need a bigger yeah. tournament. This is proof that we have a bigger tournament. Yep. Because yeah. their tournament started 
with the ACC play in game against Louisville. Yeah. So we have m- a much bigger tournament than 96 currently. So shut the fuck up for a little bit. Yeah. Stop trying to make a dollar at every possible fucking spot and destroying the goddamn sport. All right. Uh, hey, that's the only, and this is the karma. This is the only college basketball bet that I hit today. <laughs> I, I, I took the money line and I took the points and I was, I had this and I had a couple baseball bets and a, and a couple frozen four bets. And I had a great morning. I had a great fucking morning. That's tonight. We're not good either. <laughs> Dude, the Western Michigan game, they were up the entire fucking game. It was yeah, four but, to one. But then in that same regional, you faded Michigan only just. I didn't bet me. that one, though. I didn't okay. bet that one. I, I bet right. Quinnipiac and I bet. Phoenix over here breaking I down. Bet Michigan Western Michigan, right? <laughs> I bet Western Michigan. Right? I bet Western Michigan. Yeah, he's crowbarred in Michigan shit. You know, I didn't lock that up. I didn't bet that. That was a terrible beat for those that are that are just like, why the fuck? Are the they Western Michigan one before? is was yeah, a terrible brutal beat. beat. They, were, they were winning four to two going into the third period. They gave up two goals. The second goal in the third period was like 40 seconds left. And Michigan State had the goalie pulled. And then Michigan State has the momentum. They won it in OT. Just fucking brutal. Yeah, it was a wild. It was a wild morning. But like I said, I was up early in the morning and then I got confident and then yeah, that's the worst. We start drinking <laughs> confident. You start just placing yeah. wagers. I took the just fucking St. Louis Cardinals against the Dodgers just on the money line. Just cause <laughs> in, in spite, I was like, they talked a lot of shit the other night. Let's just see if they can pull this off. No, they didn't. Um, but um, I had Gonzaga money line and I had Gonzaga on the points. And I'll be honest at halftime. I was like, I think, Gonzaga, I think Gonzaga's got this game. They're going to win this game. Yeah. They're going to win this game. Now, I will say, Phoenix, you're not out of the clear. You know, you're not out of the woods yet <laughs> because I thought that Anton Watson foul was absolute horseshit. But Purdue was definitely the better team in the second half. But I thought that call was huge. But I can't say that Gonzaga was the better team. <laughs> are are you a big Anton Watson guy? Just not. Not necessarily. I'm not. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think what he does is he, he, he impacts winning that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. I, I liked what, what, uh, what, what's her, uh, Mark Few, what Mark Few was doing. He, he started Watson on Braden Smith, and they would switch the ball screen so that he could guard Edie, and so that way, because a lot of teams try to switch shit against Purdue, and then you end up with a five foot midget on Edie. But they they were able to invert it with Watson being switched on Edie, and I thought it bothered Purdue in the first half. But Purdue ended up being too much once Gonzaga got in foul trouble. Now we can talk about the how they got in foul trouble was ridiculous, but in the end, Purdue Purdue was the better team tonight. How um, do you I'm, how do you I'm still trying to figure out the first time we call foul on somebody why that has to be reviewed? I still want to know that. I still want to know that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We finally call a foul on the fucking giant, and then we got to go to the review monitor. Come on, man! <laughs> he's the hardest dude in the land to officiate. I mean, I know people are on both sides of it. You know, he's seven four, and he gets a lot of calls, and he gets away with a lot of calls. But I mean, I, some people in the chat are saying like Purdue's just good, man. Even without Zach Eady, yeah, I don't know if they're this really? good, but the, uh, they're just a good team. Lance Jones changed the dynamic of that team. Lance yeah. Jones came in from Southern Illinois and completely changed that program's trajectory, in my opinion. That was a huge get because when you think about Purdue, they don't really use the portal that much. No. You know what I mean? Like this is kind of like a kind of an outlier in a way, but that's one instance where it really, it really benefited them. Um yeah, I mean, I I was surprised at the final result there. That run they went on, I knew it was yeah. over. Yeah, I knew it was over then, but uh, the Zags, another Sweet 16, another year, year going home. Good, good year, year, though, considering good rebuilding year in a way. Um, that was a pretty good coaching job by a few. Hell yeah. Yeah, when it's yeah, all yeah. Set definitely. Done. Purdue's and in the I Elite they Eight. Were, they, were, they were a bit more competitive today than they were in November against Purdue. Like, if you're looking at just. I don't know, though, because Gonzaga was up five scores. or six and a half in that November this, game. They That's led true. for 25 minutes in November. Yeah. True. They but, like 
it kind of felt like the same game. They just ran out of gas, produced shot, uh, got him in foul trouble. They got him in foul trouble. That's he got yeah, love- one foul at the half too, and ended up fouling out with five minutes he to go. He my, got, I think he was I, on the short end of a couple whistles there. They were my favorite win. part of that game, the the coverage going into the game was how Gonzaga's team was so different since May or since November, uh, because of. Uh, Braden Huff starting at the five, and then he goes out and gets two fouls in the first. Yeah, I know. That was <laughs> so was fucking hilarious. <laughs> and they were not like some bullshit fouls. It's like, dude, he, what are you doing? And then his yeah, third one, he like slapped Edie across the face with six yeah. seconds to go. I was like, get your so, fucking big like, ass on. If the he's face. the difference, he <laughs> fucked yeah. up himself. Yeah, <laughs> he fucked up uh, because like that was the whole difference. Like he had been playing better, and then he played like sorry, a freshman. Greg, ben he, Greg, not Huff. Ben Greg. Yeah. I knew what you. Meant. Yeah, I knew what you. Meant. Yeah. Big white guy. You can't miss him. He's yeah. soft, too. He's looking like a, a dumbass stiff. out there. Fallon Eady when he's already <laughs> dunking the ball. Idiot. Uh, Duke, 54. Houston, 51. Do we have to talk about this one? Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's I a reason why I, I poured back. the whiskey. <laughs> I mean, I was always going to drink, but I'm saying when that... When that game was going down the wire, I was like, I need a fucking tall boy. I'm pulling, I'm, fi- I'm filling this thing up to, the- I am getting fucked up tonight. Slow death. Right? Slow death. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, Slow death. how do I say, th- I actually believe that John Shire had a good game plan. Fair. Now, two things can be right here. I think Houston would have covered with Jamal Shed, but I also believe Shire had a decent game plan. Uh, I feel so bad for Houston, not because it's against Duke, not because like, you know, the Duke angle, it's very, tonight was a lucky win for Duke in a way. Like, I don't want to take anything away from them, but when you have one of the best players in college basketball, not play after, you know, five minutes or whatever, 10 minutes, um, that's a huge break for you. What hurts me is we saw this happen to Houston two years ago or or three in 2021. I pulled this thing up. The same exact thing happened in 21. They ended up in the final four where they got just killed by injuries. Marcus Sasser and Tremont Mark both out for the year. What is it about Houston? They have a, a, there's something against them. I was bringing this up pre-episode. Go back to 83. They have Olajuwon and Drexler and they lose on some bullshit, a half court alley-oop dunk shit to NC state. There's something against this team. They just have bad luck. They went to the national championship twice in the eighties, lost both. They should be dude. You can't tell. And one of the years, even I think before 21, I think in 19, Caleb Mills got injured. They just stay fucking injured. And I don't know uh, why it is. They got to fire their team doctors and all that shit. Whoever, you know, the nutritionists that are feeding them all that shit. I don't know. Something's on and out. They're not. Something's fucked up there. This sucks, man. My my bracket just Suck, got yes. absolutely shit on over the past twenty four hours. Uh, your thoughts on this game, Mac? Honestly, it kind of like reminded me. Of like, remember with hugs, Kenyon Martin, that fucking Cincinnati team. As soon as he went out, as soon as Shed went out, it yeah. That's like taking Dalton Connect off fucking Tennessee or Edie off of Purdue. I'll, I'll say it right now. Houston was going to blow them the fuck out. It, it, I, like, I don't know that you could say that. They, I don't know that you, you could They say had that. more turnovers than field goal makes. They True. Had them, they, they were going to win. I, I believe too. they were going to win and cover. But I, had I don't know if they were going to win by too. 20. I, I, I think, they were I think 10's fair. I think 10's fair. Okay. They, 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 had them, they had them spooked. Uh, McCain and Proctor acted. You would have thought they were playing 5 against 10 with the way that they were flying around. And as soon as Shed went out, the the air came out of the building, and but I mean Duke Duke deserved the win. After that, they played well. Houston didn't make the adjustments. Uh, Cryer did not play well, but Cryer's not a number I, one. I thought Cryer really let us down in the second half. I, I thought halftime you'd be able to. I thought Samson's probably like, hey, this is on yeah. you and Roberts. You guys got to make this happen. Yeah, you know, let's go. Well, Roberts was in foul trouble when Shed got hurt. That's when Duke made their comeback. Yeah. So Roberts is on the bench, and then Shed gets hurt, and that's when Duke made the run. Uh, it was, but but, it was but it's, it's not only it's not only Shed. Like you look at this Houston team, they they had injuries down the stretch yet again. 
You know, yeah. uh, uh, it is what it is, man. What's his name? The freshman. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. The freshman got injured. I'm drawing a blank on his fucking name. Uh, I know Arsenal earlier in the year got injured, but the freshman down the stretch got injured. I'm drawing. Oh, a blank you're, on. oh you're talking oh. about at the end of Big Twelve play. Um, yeah, my point is, is every year I feel like this fucking Houston Cougar team gets like Tugler, four bodies. Tugler, Tugler, yeah, Tugler, yeah. They, they yeah. get four bodies on like yeah. it's 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 unfortunate because they look like the best team in basketball or at least one of the final they look final four good almost every year yeah and they don't get there be, because they're unhealthy they're unlucky i don't know yeah. but sh- i don't want to take it away from duke because like i hate duke but to me it's part of the game it is yeah it is. this shit happens i mean it, it happened it consistently happens at houston you should we should almost expect this next year you well, know what I mean? I, I always say this: two things can be true. Duke, Duke won. Duke, Duke deserved to win. They, they won with the circumstances. I fucking pussy ass Shire fucking talked about it after the game. Um, but at the same time, all you Duke fans fucking celebrating the chat. If you can't fucking look at yourself in the mirror and know that Houston was the better team by far with Shedden, then you're just lying to yourself. That would be like me having Alabama money line last night. And North Carolina w- was dictating the tempo, and then Baycott blows out his knee. And I come in here going, "Oh yeah, roll tide, roll." I told y'all, no, like, come on, you, let, let's be honest. Houston was going to win the game. Houston was older. They had those guards spooked. They punked them. They were let. The officials were letting them play, but Shed going out changed the whole thing. And let, 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 let me just say this: I locked up Houston. I feel confident about your, at your statement, had he stayed healthy, I think Houston would have covered, but I can't say that 100% because we got deprived a really good game. Potentially, you know, I don't, I don't, to me, I was surprised Duke out rebounded Houston, you know, like uh, on the offensive glass, that was to me pretty substantial. I didn't think, and I thought Duke's guards played a lot better than I thought, but I, but Shed's one of their better rebounders. I I understand. Like I said, I think we, we are okay. But I don't want to shit on Duke because they did what they had to do to win the fucking game. Now, I agree my, my point is, is like they were down, what, eight or ten when he got injured, right? I think it was eight, right? It was like it was 18, 18 to, 10. to ten. Yeah. But you could just see the the way the game was being played. But but college basketball, I, I, this is where I, I, I'm i with you. I think we're, we would have cashed. But I also think it's not a good statement to say because Creighton was up seven at one point. You know what I mean? The first half. There's a lot of examples. Carolina was up like 12 against, against Alabama. There's a lot of examples of first half, you know, you're, you're looking good and you lose the game long-term. So that's where I think we have to be honest to the Duke fan and say, okay, well, the, Nevada the game, against Dayton. yeah, I was up 17 with fucking four minutes left. All right. Um, that was great. That was great yeah. watching you during that game. Oh my God. <laughs> Time out, time out, Jake. Thanks for the donation. They were not down two points when fucking Shed got hurt. It was that's eight. A, it was like eight or ten. Fucking, it was eight that's or ten. A lie. Yeah. That's a I lie. thought it was eight. Yeah, it, it was something like that. It was like eighteen to ten. I really feel like eighteen to eight, yeah. eighteen to ten, something 18 like that. Or eighteen to ten. Yeah, but, but there was like six and a half to go in the first half. So, but I mean, it's like I said, like it's like taking Connect off fucking Tennessee or Edie off Purdue. It's he's a top it's five it. player in college basketball. It's almost yeah. more important with him being your point guard. He's your horse. Like, yeah. He single-handedly yeah. beat Texas A&M in fucking right. overtime on Sunday with the other three starters out. Right. The guy's a fucking badass. And no, he's a he's a, he was a finalist for player of the year in college basketball. Yeah. If, you, if you think that's he not a substantial injury, right? you're a fucking moron. You know what I mean? But I just want to say, like, I thought Duke played a good game, and I thought they had a good game plan. Yeah. I'll give them some some credit. Now it's not their fault the fucking guy got injured. You yeah, know what I, I mean? Agree. Like I agree with that. Um, Cody Filipowski was a, came up big too a couple times. I mean, I know we like to shit on him, but yeah, the kid, no, he, I mean, he, he did he play good. Up and played. Yeah, uh, Proctor hit some big shots. Filipowski uh, hit like a huge three at one point with like the shot clock at two. Yeah. I was like, he, get the fuck out of here! He jabs he yeah. twice, yeah. and I'm like, make dude, those layups tonight. I was like, oh my god. But yeah. on, on the flip side of that, Duke still only scores 54. So I think that adds to y'all's point of if Shed's in the game, they lose by three and Duke scoring 54. I mean, give me Shed. He's better than three. Yeah, I, I think we would have covered two. But unfortunately, Houston has awful fucking luck. Um, and this seems to be the regular 
a regular thing for Houston in this NCAA tour and year after year. Like I said, wasn't it Mills in 19? I think in 19 they had somebody. Now they weren't as good, but I'm just saying, how does it happen so frequently? Um, I don't know. We're uh, we're gonna get to the the final game here in a second, but before I do that, I want to tell you, folks out there, that the college basketball experience is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's U S based and available in forty different states. P two P social betting is a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sports, politics, pop culture, and other events with verifiable outcomes. Plus, a, they got a ton of fun social features that give it a feel of a betting social network, so to speak. Cut offers lower vig and fully customizable odds. You can create your own bets. And cut handles the payment side of things, so you never have to chase anyone down in the streets for you, for your cash. Uh, download Cut today in the App Store or head over to Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a ten percent deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Uh, Look, I mean, pick whether your your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. I truly believe. This company's awesome. All right. Cannabis cappers been doing articles over at sports gambling podcast uh, network, or I'm sorry, sports gambling podcast.com where he has been covering this and he's, he's made a bunch of money over the past, uh, you know, I'd say three or four weeks. And uh, I just love this product in general. Even before I started writing that shit, I was all in on this product uh, because you could find shit. Take, for example, you see all these States trying to get rid of, uh, you know, certain things with laws with college athletics. Well, this is, this is the old quarterback sneak here. Uh, You can win up to a hundred times the the amount of money you enter in a single night, pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry um, and sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as the instant pickup special visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. Don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as instant pickup special. Noah, you got anything you like for tomorrow? I haven't even checked. Yeah, I like Chase Hunter's higher than 15 and a half points against Alabama tomorrow. Uh, we all kind of know the story with Alabama's defense. You're going to be able to score against the Tide. Um, and Hunter has a, uh, cleared the 15 and a half benchmark eight in his or eight times in the last 12 games. So I like this number for uh, Chase Hunter higher than 15 and a half points. There we go. Get on over there, folks. Underdog fantasy promo code TCE SGPN. All right, we are back and we are going to talk about this next game. I thought this next game was, if you listen to us throughout the week, I said this was the hardest one to project for me. Good game. It was a good game, but I I cannot help. So I ended up betting just because, like I said, the worst thing you can do when you have a fire morning. (laughs) <laughs> like I was unsure of this game for the most part. Like I said, I, I ranked this. Uh, they asked me to rank all eight sweet 16 games. And I was like, this is the one I have no idea who's winning. But of course I was like, I was winning a bunch of money. I was like, fucking Creighton's a veteran team. All right. They've been to the elite eight. You know, they, they've been there. They're going to get back there. Um, so I went heavy on Creighton. I also took the points. I'm sorry. I also took the money line, not the points. Yeah, I did take the points, but I can't fucking talk right now. Um, at 35, 34 at halftime, I felt like Creighton probably should have been up like four or five. Personally, they were only up one. That's a testament to Rick Barnes in Tennessee and uh, Viscovi was out with the flu. And in the second half, you know, I, I got to come clean. I don't like Ryan Cockbrenner. I've always thought he was soft as fuck. I hate watching just, I mean, look, he might be a nice guy. My is my point, but, but I'm saying like on the court, he's fucking kills me. He kills me on the court, like the lazy ass passes. And then like, if any body is on him with any little bit of muscle, then he can't, he just will keep dribbling. And and it's like, Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. And, and McDermott's amount of times that he's like, this is our edge. We're going to it in the post. I was like, stop it. Please stop it. Just go Alexander. I know Alexander's cold, but just go Alexander off the dribble. Do some high screen and roll shit. Something, but do not go to Cockbrenner because it's driving me fucking insane. Um, Tennessee played great the second half. They went on like a 17 0 run. That was the difference in the game. And they were the more physical team. And once again, both these coaches have historically sucked in March. I, I, Creighton, I've always said to me, is soft watching the game today they defined being soft to me. Yes. Tennessee has better athletes, 
But to me, Tennessee wanted it more. And that's, that's the thing that I think is the deciding factor in the game is they wanted it more. And uh, yeah, I ate shit on Creighton. Your thoughts on this game, Mac. Tennessee looked like a team that had lost in the sweet 16 last year. And they were, they've been waiting all year to get back. I, I, I thought I'm with you. I thought they took the fight. I thought they took the fight to Creighton. And I, and I, dude, I'm so happy for Rick Barnes. I, I know. And honestly, this tournament is kind of turning into the underachieving coaches in March are advancing. Well, McDermott's got, one of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he so went to the elite. He went to the elite yeah. last year. Yeah. So at least he's got that. But you got Painter. Yeah, you that final Barnes. was Painter against Barnes. So one of them going to Shaka. four. Shot, uh, yeah, shot. Shaka could have really put Brownell. Brownell, you could throw in there Brownell, too. Brownell, yeah, fucking yeah. Keats. Keats is in the elite eight. <laughs> fucking Shires. In I the hope they give him a lifetime contract. Give him a lifetime contract. NC State. Um, Let's go. Oh, Underwood. Underwood's still in. Underwood. Yeah, you're right. All, you're right. You're making a strong case. Are fucking are advancing in. Um, I'm happy for Barnes. I I thought they they they've lost some tough games over the years, and Connect Connect gives them a different element that fucking guy's so good i love watching him play i kind of uh, felt like as soon as i saw that uh Vizekovi or what i never can pronounce Vizekovi. 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 when he yeah. when he was out i kind of thought that was addition by subtraction because i texted connect, that to you guys too yeah connect kind of takes all the shots anyway or ziegler so um and i think people forgot ziegler was out for the sweet 16 last year so having connect and ziegler Tennessee's going to give Purdue all they can handle. And so that's going to be a great game. Should be. I, my my takeaway from this one was Tennessee brought the fiscality to yeah. uh, Creighton. It showed. It really, it showed. It really fucked up Creighton. Um, They're so finesse. How can you Alexander. year in? How can you year in, year out? No, I'd say specifically it was, Cockbrenner. It's well, no, no, yeah. Like yeah. Alexander yeah. had been done, done the heavy lifting for this team throughout the deep run. February, March. He was their best player. And he was a no-show tonight. Um, I I understood why they were going to Kalkbrenner, though. That was somewhat of a matchup advantage on paper down low. In my After opinion, three minutes of watching the game, though, I think you'd be like, uh, to me, I, I put that yeah. on McDermott to be like, this is not going to work. But at the same time, though, like they had saw that Alexander and Ashworth didn't have it either. So it was really kind of Baylor and who? So... Yeah, I, I thought the right team won. Uh, Tennessee had kind of controlled that entire second half, so um, that was that was my opinion on that one. Purdue's got their hands full because Tennessee, if they play like that against Purdue, they've got a really good shot to win that game. Oh, you hear that? You put Zach Eady on a Playboy magazine. Next thing you know, he's taking he's he's going yeah. against I, fucking the boy. Napkins only got Purdue minus one there. Ooh, you hear that, well, GBO I, Farms? It, it depends how the game's officiated. And by the way, throw Nate Oates in the company of coaches. At, oh, dude, I mean, they all, had no business dude, winning that. All fucking these game. coaches are yeah. fucking that have underachieved or in the Elite Eight. That was of Hurley, dude. Hurley. That was Hubert Davis more than it was Nate Oates. They had no business winning that fucking game. Yeah, where's that crowd that was? They uh, had no at me? business. Yeah. It's that crowd that was tweeting at me that Hubert Davis is a better coach than Tom Izzo. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. I know he beat him yeah. because his team's better, but come on. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Roy Williams, but not Tom Izzo. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, the cocktail napkin doesn't account for home edge. Purdue's got a home edge in Detroit over Tennessee. For sure. You're in love with that fucking Detroit bullshit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're it's in love with Harvard Schwartz and Big 12, too. Like, who wouldn't <laughs> he, be? He, <laughs> he, he, he loves his Purdue fucking fan base the, in, in Detroit. Purdue he's, home part court, he's part of it. <laughs> the Purdue-Detroit home court worked out a little bit better than Arizona's L.A. home court. I could tell you that. that Something true. tells me Beanick was in section fucking 333 tonight in his fucking boiler-up fucking shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's talk about, I mean, what well, I mean. I don't want to, I mean, Cody, did you give, I feel like you kind of talked about it, but did you want to give any more analysis on the Creighton Tennessee game? Well, I mean, you, you basically hit it, man. We talked about it pre-show Cockbrenner. I feel like was the difference. I mean, Shireman can only do so much, you know, like, yeah, yeah he's, he's a bad boy, but he, he has to start forcing uh, shots when uh, Alexander's off. Cockbrenner doesn't want to get his ass on the block. Like, 
Where, what's he what's he supposed to do? I couldn't help but think if they had Nebhard and Kaluma, they would have they would have had oh, the difference yeah. makers. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It, how do they fuck that up, man? NIL is that just all NIL or is that just living in Omaha? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah, an indictment on McDermott. I mean, do they not want to play for McDermott? Maybe. Nebhard's brother Nemhard played Nemhard to Gonzaga, thing, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Nemhard thing. He was going to Gonzaga just because he his brother played there, and he probably watched them growing up. Um, but that whole storyline of Caleb Love meeting UNC, and I, it wasn't as much of a storyline in this region, but Nemhard meeting Creighton. Both of those scenarios. Bye bye. Both yeah, teams on both sides lose. Yeah. Matthew Austin says, y'all need to send me what the hell you're puffing on. No, I'm, I'm a uh, consuming. What, 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 what are you talking about, man? What are we talking about here? Lost you did? No, he's, he's pretty- <laughs> right. I mean, what are we talking about? I don't Matt, understand. Matthew's pretty yeah. convinced that Duke won that game handily and shed getting injured. Didn't well, he? I would say this no, since the shed there's injury, couple, there's a couple four, of loud by three. Well, since the shed injury, they were the much better team to me. Like they, they played better. I knew Houston was kind of fucked. Even at halftime, you know, I think uh, shout out to I think Brad Power tweeted this out. If you didn't live bet tennis or uh, if you didn't live bet Duke when the shed injury happened, you, you probably shouldn't be betting. I, I the only reason I didn't was my bracket. I wanted to root for my fucking bracket, and I'm like, okay, God, I should bet this. They're definitely gonna lose. I knew they were gonna lose. With I texted dad, my brother, and I'm like, fuck you, man. Covered. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I, I Duke. To me, played they were the like at with with him out the game. Yeah, that was a fair and square win for you know for Duke with that scenario at that point. If that makes sense. Um, I get, but but Colby, I get a kick out of halftime. Everybody's like, hammer Duke, but hey, hammer Duke, and it was minus two and a half, and they win by three. It wasn't like they fucking one going away just true. because. Of, but they were up, of what, forty seconds left. Yeah, it, it, they 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 hit a the old fashioned three point play there. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It sucks for Houston, man. I feel it really does. bad for Houston fans and, and Kelvin Sampson. Um, it does for Kelvin. But but like I said, if I mean w- this has been happening, a- Kenyon Martin. Remember Kenyon Martin at Cincinnati? I mean, you know this because hugs. But this happens in the NCAA tournament a lot, and teams get a pass in a way. Like Duke kind of got a pass today. They still played good. Both can be right. And they get the pussy pack Correct. next round. Yeah. Correct. It, Correct. And, the, and they get the pussy pack. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's the main thing. It's like two or three things should be true. Yes. Duke was the better team tonight. And I thought from, they had a good game plan. Yeah. I did. Yeah. They put, they put, they answered the bell, but at the same time, I will take my chances with Houston winning easily if Shed's there, but he didn't, he wasn't there. That's part of the game. Yeah. Injury. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, we could do so many fucking different ifs and buts if we, if we, I mean, we can go back year by year and say, well, this guy didn't play the whole, the whole national championship be changed, but this is what happened. It sucks. It seems like it happens in Houston every fucking year. And uh, let's, let's recap a little bit one, of yesterday. What's one up? One last thing. Sorry. Uh, CBB, CBB Nick jumped into the chat. Shout out to him. We've had him on the show plenty. Uh, it needs to be said one last time before we move on to Thursday's action. It was just another ACC victory over Big Twelve. <laughs> I mean, uh, like uh, icing on the cake. I mean, icing like on the cake, right? <laughs> so I mean, I mean, it was, but how I mean, many, to how me, many that times one is that it one. That I do believe that one. You look back five years from now, that will like in your mind that has an asterisk. Yeah, it should because Part you're just deep. like, yeah. I mean, it's like the Kenyon Martin shit. It's like whatever you know, like whatever, whatever. Uh, it doesn't even matter college basketball, whatever sport where you know that a very good player gets injured. Now it's not Duke's fault. If you're Duke, you take it run with it. You might be able to turn it into a fucking national. Cha- the national championship wouldn't be an asterisk, but when you look back specifically at that game, I think you're always wonder as a Houston fan, what if? Yeah, that that's honestly like, like Duke, we don't know. Ho- hopefully they fucking lose. I mean, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't fucking want them to win, but if they do go on to the national championship, nobody's going to remember that they beat Houston other than the Houston fans, they, that that's the biggest thing. What if for Houston, because yeah. they could have won it all with shed and, and, and since no one wants to get it out of the way, I'll get out of the way. Yes. The big 12 is still the best league in America. Yes. They had a fucking dog shit tournament. 
But that doesn't excuse that they had over half their fucking league in. They've had 60% of their league in every single year for the last decade. They've had over half their league in the Sweet 16 or later over the last four years. They got two out of the last three national champions. But, yes, they had a shit tournament. Two tournaments in a row. They had two in the Elite Eight last year. None in the Final Four. This year, none okay, of them get to the Elite Eight. Now you're just picking. Well, I mean, we're talking about the Elite Eight right now. I'll say Dude. this, man. We talked a lot of shit about the ACC. They've clearly answered the fucking call. Yep. They did. They've they cl- had a good tournament. I can't say anything but just eat a, sa- a shit sandwich. Clemson looks fucking incredible. NC State looks like goddamn. They they got uh, you know Bob Cousy playing point for him. That like all of a sudden you know these teams come up and it's like NC Nick said. I, I go back to an episode back and he goes, "We win. We count our wins in March." And I can't bullshit you. The ACC's done this. I don't like the ACC. All right. If anything, but but like, Colby, we can play this game all day. Is the ACC overrated because the number one seed lost to the number four seed SEC? Is the ACC overrated because the number three team got blown the fuck out by the number seven seed Mountain West? The ACC has had some overachieving teams in the tournament. You have to Fair. take the body of work. Just Fair, because ACC- but dude, I'm, yes. but I, I gotta, I gotta say, they're overachieving. They've, they've shut people up. I, but I'm, it's I'm, not I'm never buying in. Too, though. <laughs> I'm never buying into Iowa State or TCU ever again until they fucking show me. That means because you're Iowa State. Run next year. You just <laughs> no, fuck both of those you know, programs. And I do think moving forward, we need to handy, we need to consider that. So next January, when the when the Big 12 is rolling along, because it is a great basketball conference, I'm gonna sit there and say they gotta earn it. They they basically have turned into NC State to me, where it's like they have out. to prove it. They have the to prove it to me. Home? Iowa State. Let's oh, let's okay. talk about that game. Right, let's start about that game. The whole Big State. Twelve. I was like, no, what? no, no, no. Yeah. Iowa State and TCU Iowa. is what I'm saying, yeah. and yeah. those are two yeah. teams that helped me solidify why I thought the Big Twelve. You know, I'm like, oh, they're so much better than every other conference. Iowa State, you fucking, you suck. You you do this every fucking year. To start the game, what was it like, twelve to one to start the game? For a team that never can come back from a double digit spread, I feel like ever. This is your moment, and you shit the bed like this. You shit the bed like this it to hurts. be like, and and a, they never good. had the lead at one point. And their offense, I can't believe they stayed. Their defense is so good that they stayed in the fucking game. But their offense and the shots that they were taking were some of the most difficult, terrible shots. That I, I've seen in an NCAA tournament game in the Sweet 16, I think, ever. Like sure. I had them in the national championship. I wanted I was all I had a bunch of money on Iowa State to, uh you know yesterday. I watched that game and I go, man, I fucking hate this team. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do they know like and I'll put this on Otzelberger. Like exactly. out of timeouts, the offensive setups were so bad to me. It's like Illinois is not a great defensive team. Mm-mm. They are not a great defensive team. Maybe they were playing better. Sure. I buy into that some, but I'm sorry, man. I am out on TCU and Iowa state being re- like, I can't, I can't buy into them next year. I can't. They folded to a bad soft. It's not a bad, I'll say soft Illinois team. I mean, Coleman Hawkins is your leader. Terrence Shannon. I mean, Max talked about it. He came from the big 12. Was it? that guy at Texas tech and he comes to Illinois and gets guarded by, you know, you, you said it, a bunch of white guys and he's staples. Averaging, staples yeah. Yeah. Staples. And he's averaging 24 a game. I mean, <laughs> he's not that guy. And Iowa state gives up 72 to a Illinois team. That's just, and, I'm, and a, that, I'm an Illinois hater. So, I mean, I'm no, just, but Illinois missed a bunch of free throws too. That should have been worse. It should have been worse. They just couldn't hit free. I, I was so disappointed. I actually think that was, th- I, I was disappointed with TCU not beating Utah state. Cause I thought TCU was way better than Utah state. Agreed. And it, that's the second year TCU has done this to me, but Iowa state to me is like, that was pathetic in my opinion. Like that was like, you are in the sweet fucking 16. It looked like you never played offense before. And, and, and like I had bought into them changing their offensive philosophy. Uh, it's like they have more shot creators this year. I think they can actually make a difference. 
And it goes back to me, to me, like to fucking Jamal Tinsley losing to fucking Hampton. I'm never taking Iowa State. They fucking choke every fucking time they've ever made the NCAA tournament. I'm out. I'm sorry, Cyclone fans. Prove it to me. Well, well hey, I will say, but we we're seeing it this year. All the teams that we said were choke artists are fucking in the Elite Eight. So maybe, maybe, maybe Iowa State is. And one last thought. I know CBB Nick. He's, he's they're flexing tonight. The ACC crowd. Just remember. Two out of the last three national champions are fucking Big 12. None uh, since then have been ACC. And uh, we'll, we'll see if the ACC gets it done this year. W- wins in March. We'll, we'll see. I don't, th- I, I don't think so. I don't think any, any of these three teams will win at all. Dude, what's but, crazy? Let's talk about this for a second. I actually think the teams with the best chance are the ones that I almost didn't think belonged in. Like, I know Clemson was, 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 was in. Yeah. Uh, but I, I questioned they, their seating. Yeah, you I said was they like, were overseated. Yeah, I thought they should have been further back. And then NC State, I'm like, oh, they banked in a fucking toilet bowl. I think those are their best chances to actually win the national championship. Now that Carolina's out, I don't think Duke could. Pro- I don't think Duke could win the national championship. I mean, maybe, maybe because the the, the, the yeah. path yeah. the path that they have, I think maybe helps them a little bit. But unbelievable. Like this is a, like people. I was listening to someone say, oh, this is a. It's a boring uh, NCAA tournament because you don't have any uh, Cinderella's. I was like, well, what the fuck is Clemson and, and NC State? I know Clemson's a, a six, but God damn it, there's Cinderella in my mind. <laughs> no, you am were, I wrong here? No, you were right about Clemson being overseeded. I didn't see NC State getting this far. I don't think anybody saw NC Nobody State. Nobody did, except NC if, State fans. If you've got that, s- send it to uh, TCE. <laughs> send the bracket to TCE, and I will pay you. But, you know hey, what I it, might do? Uh, I, what's up, Max? Oh, and another note for the Big 12. We're getting rid of the dead weight this year. Texas and Oklahoma. Guys. They're, <laughs> fucking all, they're holding us back. They're holding us back. They're, they're afraid. That's where the choking came from this March. It was Texas and Oklahoma. The only problem right. is, is you're getting Tad Boyle in Colorado. <laughs> right? Well, and yeah. Tommy Boyd in Arizona. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Bobby Hurley. I don't know. That hey, might be more dead weight. At um, least they want to be there. At least they want to be in the league. True. True. I'll accept them. I'll accept them. Um, I was going to say I should do an episode at some point. Yeah, I'll put it like this. If NC State wins the national championship, I'm not showing I will yeah. I will read every message sent to me on air. How does that sound? Because I, oh I can tell God. you, I can tell I, you, like, I get, I think I get that'll be careful. great content. I think I you get, owe it if they get to the final four. Well, I mean, let's I, let's be honest. You call them the pussy pack for the last two months of the year. No, but they are the pussy pack. What I'm saying, really um, <laughs> no, no, no. It's got to be national championship because. Uh, but I'll say this: like I, I, you know how you get the notification on your phone, but you you only get like a like two lines of it. The DM. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know. What you're I, I get like two lines of it, but I see it's a gigantic fucking message, and I just see like <laughs> you dumb fucking, you know, like like. The, you you gap tooth blind non college bad drunken piece of shit smart cock like oh that's all I see on on all my DMs and it's it's highly entertaining. It's twelve lines long. So, yeah, so, sometimes my 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 wife goes, "Who's messaging?" Uh, no one, no one, honey. Don't don't worry like about it. Say, it's just a guy that's outside the house and he's got a fucking gun. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. One day I might die. Uh, one day one one day I I could see a crazy fan blowing me away. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, if you win the national championship, I will read all of those on air. Promise you. All right, I'll 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 go through it and I'll read them all on air. Um, and it, you're pretty fucking close. I mean, I, I didn't think you get this far. <laughs> they've had a good draw too. I mean, <laughs> they, they've seen Duke two two times this year. Three times, I Three think. Times, right? Yeah, and they it's beat them in the they beat them know, in the ACC tournament run. So I mean, you yeah. know what you're getting. Like, <laughs> this is the this is the best that NC uh, the pussy pack could have hoped for. Uh, what one hundred percent. One hundred percent, I think. Do you realize uh, you're thing. guaranteed to have to root for Matt Painter or Rick Barnes in the Final Four because they played the winner of Duke or the Pussy Pack? <laughs> Let's go, Max. You're Finally rooting, gonna take you're rooting for Matt Painter yeah. or Rick Barnes to get to the national championship. It's easier to root for Duke Ma- and NC State's on the other side. It is not, easier to root for Matt Painter than Rick. I'm in it. I'm out. See you guys. I'll see you guys in November. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, last thing that I wanted to talk about with Illinois Iowa State. Uh, so 
I think the game ceiling play was Terrence Shannon Jr.'s steal, and then he goes down the court, lays it into the hoop. Did we not all watch Coleman Hawkins dive into the front row right after that? I fucking that hilarious. I, I I don't know because I I, I might have punched the door when that fucking when that fucking Terrence like I could see the pass coming. I was like, don't throw the pass, you stupid motherfucker! Don't throw the fucking pass. And it was like, oh god, of course, of course. <laughs> I, you can't I wish do it somebody... against Illinois. Illinois is the one. See, that's they must have watched a bunch of Big Ten tape, and you could do that against any other Big Ten team. But <laughs> Illinois has athletes. They do. They, they can. They There's can. Plenty of them. They can hop in those margins. All right. Like. It, <laughs> Go to the Michigan Wolverines. Just saying. <laughs> nah, true. True. Not really. <laughs> I can't uh, wait for the West Virginia Bulldogs next year. So great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to recap. The, the Michigan the, the, Wolverines had a dog. And and that was hey, that was, and he yeah, didn't play half the season, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, let's talk about this. So Illinois wins. Shot that that dude. I mean, what the fuck happened after the game here? The, the, can we talk about this? Shout out to the Illini because I do think their athleticism is something UConn hasn't seen, especially on the offensive side of the ball all year. Because mm-hmm. it's like Creighton with, with on drugs. Um, this Creighton is limited by their staples, but um. What what the fuck's going on? You got Brad Underwood with his shirt off. They're shooting super soakers at each other. What the fuck is going on in this locker room here? I think we got to fade them. I think uh, 100%. Yep. They acted like they I, I don't even know. It's like weird to me. Everyone's they, got they do that after they every win. Round too. Yeah, they do it after they've done it after every win in the march. It, not, with off, not with a shirt I'm, off. Not with a shirt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shirt off. If they, I'm a high if I'm a high price transfer If I'm a high price transfer or recruit and Ooh. like and I'm deciding between Illinois and I don't know, you know, if, if it's Illinois and uh, <laughs> Villanova, yeah. I'm like, oh, let me go to Villanova. I don't know what the what the fuck is gonna. What is this guy doing with the shirt off? I feel like he's gonna come grab my cock or something. Get the fuck away from me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just weird. It's just right, weird. It's just a weird dude. Yeah. I mean, he's just always been a weird. He's a psychopath for one, but then he's a weird guy. And how about just don't put the goggles on? What? Are, it's not Come champagne. On. That's what I'm saying. It's what the fuck? It's just weird. It's just a fucking weird video. I had to retweet that shit because I was like, y'all fucking people are weird. That that's I've seen a lot of locker room parties. That's a weird one. Um welcome to Illinois. That yeah. su- it sucked that uh, Illinois beat Iowa State. That it fuck Illinois. I hate this team. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I've got it up right now. Yeah, can we play that? It's just a fucking yeah. youtube.com slash the college experience. It's just a weird thing. It's just, it's just, I don't know. Like, I love it. And then I like it. They, they said Brad Underwood shirts off all the time. Oh, Ooh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, but there's a video of this, man. There's a video. I know, I know. Oh, okay. I, know. <laughs> I didn't notice the goggles until you brought it up, but what the, what are you doing? What like the fuck are you mask. doing here? Yeah. Like, what? It's, I'm it's, sorry. It's water. This is a stupid thing. It's I'm standard. sorry. Like, I love it. I, what do you love about it, though? I don't it understand. No, it's great. I what are you going to have them play? Great. Fucking hopscotch ne- next when they're boxers? I don't understand it. Like, what the fuck is like? Whose idea was this? Hey, let's take this super soaker. We should all take our shirts off and let's spray each other. What? I mean, just if, if you just scroll through the Illinois Twitter page, they've posted it. Like, do they have an the NIL end. deal with Super Soaker or something? I don't understand it. I just don't understand how it's know. random that they never get to play BYU. Like yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey. maybe they do. If so, then I understand it a little bit more. Hey, if um, that's what they need to look forward to to win a tournament game, I mean, keep doing it. Cause no, when's the last time <laughs> Illinois made it to the Sweet 16? Because I know never. that was a big <laughs> the okay. Elite no. Eight almost never. They They've got one five. Elite Eight appearance. No, no, no. I remember they played in the Natty in what? 04? Was it? Was that they the Brown? Elite eight. Is that the D yeah. Brown team? It was like yeah. early. No, 2000s. that was Darren Williams, Late right? 2000s. Or no, maybe I'm I don't know. Maybe I'm off. Darren Williams might have been the two. I think I think yeah. D Brown was on that team. I remember his long shorts. That's about it. <laughs> they played in the in the national championship game in 2005. 05. Damn. That was a oh, good God. team too. But. They should have they were up a lot. I mean they blew that thing. I thought they were going to win it. Um shout out to the Illini. They they square off against UConn. We're talking about them. Carolina, Alabama. 
drove me absolutely cr- fucking crazy. I don't even like, you know, I grew up hating North Carolina, but I bet on them. So I wanted to win my bet. And I feel like I was on the right side. It's just North Carolina is fucking horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the in-game adjustments. I was shocked that he didn't want to play slower. Yeah. That's not Carolina basketball. Though. But that was my but whole thing. done that. Camp. Like you have Baycott play slower. I, I agree. I agree. You have experienced you. players, way more experienced players than Bama does. Yep. That was my whole reason for taking Bama is because I knew Carolina would come out and be like, oh, we're not going to slow it up. We're North fucking Carolina. And exactly. I don't know why they, but it, but the more and more I watch, the worst thing that happened was them making 10 threes in the first half. When they made 10 threes in yeah, the first right. half, they thought they could keep running and gunning. They weren't playing inside out with Baycott. Um, I, uh, thought Al- I thought Alabama deserved to win. What? No, I I I, I thought no. that they out, I thought they out executed Carolina <laughs> in the last ten minutes. That's that's the big part. I think down the stretch, Alabama definitely. I mean, I didn't. See I don't it. think ten minutes. I think like final like four or five minutes. Like they Grant stole Nelson, the, to me. Nelson they stole the over. game. Yeah, Grant Nelson took yeah. over there. They the blew end. a five. They blew a five point lead with four minutes, and then they got it back too. But well, Carolina Grant, also had, I think, a six or seven point lead at one point in that it was ten minute stretch. It was yeah, back and forth. I, but Carolina. To me, like what they had it, they had the ball. Like, like the the Twitter's going wild with this shit. With Withers, they had a one point lead. What, what like a, a, a buck nine left, and the ball, and he shoots a three, a twenty one percent three point shooter shoots a three with twenty six seconds on the shot clock or something. You know, like what are you doing? Yeah, that's why yeah. I felt like Alabama just they they played smarter. It, Carolina treated it like it was a fucking regular season game for whatever reason. Them in Arizona. We'll talk about Arizona here in a minute. My God. Yeah. I, 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 to me, it seemed like Alabama like stole the game, but credit to them because Carolina was up 12 at one point in the second half. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're or maybe even 14 uh, to me, Alabama, like Grant Nelson went off credit to him and credit to Nate Oates in Alabama. Cause they, they, they did make better plays down the stretch, but I just feel like they stole it. I feel like the game was right. Like Carolina had it and they were fucking around and you yeah. fuck around with a good team and they steal it. They gave it away. I mean, they yeah. missed the dunk and they took, Oh yeah. Baycott's missed the dunk. Yeah. 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 The missed dunk was wide open. It's like, what are you doing? Baycott? Um, RJ uh, Davis going four for 20 from the field and zero for nine from three does not help anything either. That's your guy. I mean, he's got to come up. I mean, I know he ended up with 16, but yeah, you yeah, cannot, that, you cannot go four for 20, shoot 20% from the field. Like, come on, man. I, and I'm a big RJ Davis guy, but yeah. Yeah. No, you, that's a good point. I mean, if anything, I think Cormac Ryan was keeping him in the game for a little bit there. He was hitting a lot of threes, five of eight uh, from three. I mean, and I felt like for a possession or two late in the game, maybe I'm fucking crazy. I thought he was on the bench and I was like, how do you have the guy that like kind of strikes the most fear? Like Baycock can draw a double team. This isn't Cockbrenner here. Like Tennessee was playing straight up on Cockbrenner. Uh, Baycock can draw the double team. So like uh, just via rotation, if you can get Cormac Ryan open, it's pretty yeah. automatic. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't thought know. Huber was awful. He, he did a real, I, I was surprised at how fast he wanted to play. I was really surprised at that. Like to me, I thought this, a veteran team, they weren't always this fast. I know Carolina's DNA this year is they played at a, at a pretty high pace. Um, but the, if you go years past, I, I believe they were a slower team. So it's like, those guys are still on the roster. So it's yeah. like, to me, I thought you would say, Hey, Alabama is out of whack. They like the, the way to beat them. We saw Clemson do it in Tuscaloosa. We've seen a bunch of other teams to me that, the, the formula to beating Alabama is make them honor each possession because they don't normally honor possessions. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they normally are just playing with their athletes and just it's, it's, you know, Chinese fire drill, you know what I mean? Just shit going everywhere. Um, but I don't know it, it, it shout out to them. I didn't think they would get there. I lost money on this and I- uh What's Am up? I crazy to think that Baycott was a better player as a sophomore than he is a senior? Like, did he he flashed more when he was young? I mean, even as a freshman, I know it was a no. You're not crazy. Okay, well, he I, got like, paid. A, he got paid. Uh, that always makes anybody relax. But I thought he uh, got fatter. Well, I I he got better at the free throw line, though. He got a lot better at the free throw line, though. I, I think he voluntarily took a backseat role in point production 
uh, mainly this season. Um, but the rebounds also decreased a little bit. Uh, I mean, I know he, he was in a four man rotation. I mean, Cody Kessler was on the team. He's in the, he's in the, you know, in the league now, but Kessler was on that team. I know there was a couple others, but it just seemed like he gave a shit like two, three years ago that he just, I mean, I know he cared now, but he just didn't have, he just didn't he, impress me as much as he did. As he a looked like a guy that had been in college for a while, that had had some nice nights, and <laughs> kind of, like he he didn't have that hunger. Like, I agree with you. Like he he looked like he lost a step. Now he still was productive. He still was good, but he looked like he put on weight. He was not as athletic. Well, he's athletic. making big money now. That's exactly. we have to start to handicap this. But also, I'm going to yeah. say this to defend him a little bit. He did get better at the free throw line. He got a lot better. True. Yeah, and. True. So I don't know why you're playing at such a fast pace with him. Do you when you're change pro- your style of play for him? Is that what I, I mean? would? I would yeah. a little bit. He's he's one of the better players in college basketball, right? I think you have to try to accommodate your team the best. And I, this is yeah. with any coach. It doesn't matter football, yeah. basketball, baseball. You have to look at your roster and say, what can we do best to make our players better? And you and shouldn't I, be doing that in year yeah. three of Hubert. This should already be known. Um, you knew Alabama was going to come in wanting to rev it up and go. Uh, that was everybody in the entire building knew that was going to happen. So that's on Hubert, in my opinion, because yeah, I agree. You you know the players on your team more than anything, and like Hubert brought that's, back that core for a reason. And I yeah. never bought and, into this Carolina team either, man. I know that like I feel like they overachieved. I never thought they were like that vintage Carolina team. I mean, I'll agree to that, but I still think they should still be playing. I thought this was like, like I said, I feel like it was a stolen game. That happens sure. though, but I don't think they, I don't think they were ever like, to me, they didn't strike me as this is a team that's going to win the national championship. I, I would agree to that as, uh, assessment, but, uh, and shout out to team leader, 2010 told Dundee earlier to watch out for Tennessee. He was correct. Um, San Diego state got absolutely wha- waxed. By UConn, good God! This is the only game I didn't bet. So this glad I didn't bet. bet. This is my biggest bet. Oh, you, so you went? I didn't. I, I was going to take San Diego State plus twelve, and I was like, I mean, I took it on the picks page. But I'm saying like UConn, Cody. Yeah, yeah the, I'm the line closed at ten, ten and a half. Did it not? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think I, ten and I, a half. I ended right? up getting on the closing line. I just felt like Ladie. They play through the D and their jumpers disappear a lot of the time throughout the year. I lost a lot, made money, lost money on San Diego state throughout the year. It was hard betting that conference, but it's hard betting that team because they play with their food. Sometimes with shitty competition, they play with their food. They almost lost to UCSD. Probably should have, um, but but their jump shot disappears a lot of the time. Like, I don't know. I just felt like they're, they would have had to catch fire. To, to hang with UConn and UConn would have had to fall apart. I just, but during so. the first half, I was like, all right, maybe they can stay. I didn't, I never yeah. thought they would win. I just thought maybe they could stay within that number. And the second half, good Lord. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the first, like five happened. minutes, like first three minutes. The second, half, I was like, yeah, this game's over. Cause I know San Diego state, just like Iowa state, when there's a 10 point deficit, you're done. Yeah. And Iowa State came out the game. It was 12 to 1 or 13 to 1. And I was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> you motherfuckers. Um, that's like a hundred point lead for those teams because you don't have an automatic score. So um, shout out to UConn is dude. If you there's already talk rumblings about this now that if UConn runs the table, I mean, you're talking about a crazy two-year stretch. It's amazing that New Mexico State beat them the year before. I would love to see the difference on like how you approached the, you know, how Dan Hurley approached, you know, that loss and and what the deciding what the it factor was on the difference. I know getting some of the recruits he got was huge and Tristan Newton in the portal and Camp Spencer in the portal, but yeah. yeah. Spencer's so good for that team too. Like perfect. He replaced actually no, it actually pisses me off when I think about it because I'm like he was very good on, on Rutgers. I was like, man, Rutgers is Northeast too. You got to be a little bitch to go to fucking Yukon. It's well it, documented too yeah. that he was like not Yukon's first option either out of the portal. No. Like they wanted Nick Timberlake on Kansas over. Oh God. Spencer. And Spencer is just a perfect fit. Um, and I shouldn't do this, but I, I'm going to feed into it. Uh, Daniel out here trying to, you know, 
to circle the bases on a, on a take that he had in December saying Danny Hurley was a better coach than Rick Pitino. I mean, no. get the fuck out of here. Buddy, like, if Dan this, Hurley this, wins the national championship this year, he's still not he's better still than Rick Pitino. <laughs> he, he, it's just an age thing. It's like, it's like saying the ACC is better than the Big 12 <laughs> just because they got three out of eight in the pit. Like, I was waiting on that. Dude, yeah. it's literally the exact same. Like your okay, body. No, no, no. Here, here's a good, here's a good comparison. Of time. Yes. A, a good comparison would be saying Kirby Smart is a better head coach than fucking Bobby Bowden right now. You can't say that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you could say for, for or, this day and or age. Or even in this generation, he's a better coach than Nick Saban. Well, Nick Saban had a decade and a half. And, and Saban's got a winning record against uh, Kirby Smart still. Yeah. So, that, uh, so, I mean, like, yes, he's doing it. Um, we, we, look, we hate Danny Hurley. I'll gladly put that on a fucking billboard if you give me the money. All right. But I, I know he's a good coach. He made to me. He really impressed me last year with his ex, with his in game adjustments in the tournament. I can't hide from that. That truth is the truth. He's a very good coach. Is he very annoying? One thousand percent. But is he better yeah. than Rick Pitino? Not yet. Not yet. Are you? You do not remember Rick Pitino's teams at Kentucky. All right. You do not remember them at Louisville winning national championships. You don't remember him making the Final Four at Providence. You don't remember him winning that winning championships in fucking Greece. No, no one does, but you know what I mean? He had them down yeah. last year at halftime at Iona. At yeah. Iona. Yeah. <laughs> he had UConn <laughs> down at the half at Iona last year. The last team to have UConn down at the half was fucking Rick Petita in Iona. I like Matthew <laughs> Austin's chat in the in here. Uh, he says, let's just all place UConn plus 100 to win the national championship Hell and see no. if it jinxes it, right? Oh, actually, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know right. the one team that that's you know the one team. Odds. That's pretty money, right? Good odds, actually. You, you, know you know the one. You know one team is going to get him, right? NC State. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody tweet that out. Like, yeah, the last team to win five and five and then make a run was UConn. So it's either UConn's going to be the next dynasty, Tennessee, and baby. they have to stop NC down. State doing the same thing that UConn <laughs> did when uh, you know before they became this generation's blue blood. But I mean, that's kind of fun. Um. We we haven't talked. Shout out to UConn. They look fucking phenomenal. My, hey, by the way, if Hurley wins, he'll have two, right? Yeah. National championships. All right. Rick Pitino has two. I know the longevity is way in Rick Pitino's favor, but. No, Pitino's got three. Does he? No, I think Tubby got one with it. Uh, did Pitino get two with. No, Pitino got two at Kentucky three. and then he got one at one Louisville. Louisville right? now. Yeah. I don't know how well, many. Well, Tubby Smith Vegas also season. won one. <laughs> Tubby yeah. Smith got one with Pitino's players. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, who knows? Are, are we thinking of the 2013 one? Did that one get uh, officially right. stripped? No. That one's yeah. a mad. Well, it was. It was vac- no. It's vacated. But I get, we'll say three. Yeah. We'll say three. Yeah, it's definitely three. I yeah. mean, I'm it's it's been, definitely we, we three. Yeah. 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 Come on, prostitution's been happening since the beginning of time. You kidding me here? <laughs> Fucking. Uh, let's. What are we talking so, about here? If Hurley gets another one, do you do you put him on Patino's level? I guess is what now, he needs to do it for a longer amount of time. Cause to me, like uh, here's a good example is Hurley did good at Rhode Island, but he didn't do Patino good at those. Like he had, he didn't have Rhode Island. Like Patino had, you know, I know Providence is a better job than Rhode Island, but to me, he didn't have, like, I even think like Patino's job at Iona was more impressive than Hurley at Rhode Island. I'd agree with so, that. I'd so, agree. so like he'd have to continue he he could get there though. He's a good coach and he's clearly on to something, but he's just a prick. But yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, there's plenty of fucking assholes that are great at life. You well, know what I mean? Like, yeah, good for college basketball. That's, yeah. That's the you thing. need to have people you hate when Wouldn't you have this heel. When you have just popular. vanilla coaches left and right, you turn into the NFL and you're just like, who's this coach? I, who's this, I, I will, who's this pussy? I will say with, yeah. with Hurley. <laughs> When he loses his son, that's a walk on. I'm interested to see how he is after his son's out because I know that he averages zero points, but having him in his corner to fucking be a be with the team, the heart, be a bridge person with the locker room, and then that fucking maniac is invaluable. I bet you, outside of the guys that are really fucking good all Americans, the the Hurley son is as invaluable to that program as anybody. 
I think his dad being a fucking maniac. You said the same thing about DeVries on the Big 12 uh, network, right? Well, um, it, well, but it does help that DeVries' son averages 22 points a game. That, that's true. I'll that's take true. that, too. Hey, that's, <laughs> true. that's true. That's true. Uh, I'll take both. Also, <laughs> I mean, just the amount of guys that – I mean, Hurley's now put either into the NBA last year or, like, the amount of guys that he's had graduating. Those guys should be able to come back and help out the program. Well, that, I actually well, would argue that's one of the best things about Danny Hurley to me is Patino's teams had legit NBA guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you would see Jamal Mashburn and, and just big time draft picks. It might not have worked out in the NBA. I remember the Knicks draft, Walter McCartney. You know what I mean? Like they, they had guys that were all like to me, like Hurley's guys, not that many go to the NBA. I feel like it's, I mean, we'll see how it shakes out. I don't know. Last year's team, I thought there was two that were drafted highly, right? We had uh, Jordan Hawkins and Andre Jackson. So well, you just need to see if they pan out. Yeah. Did the, did the center on their them. last year's team get drafted? Um, Sonogo, I think he's yeah. overseas, right? He's overseas. But I mean, he might, I thought he got drafted, though. Didn't he get drafted? He just didn't make no the idea. team, right? I don't, um, I don't know about Sonogo. Yeah. Um, he was a freak I, last year, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, shout out to UConn. And then I think this is the, one of the best stories going on and Mac's going to hate talking about this, but God damn it. Clemson owned that game against Arizona. I was on Clemson. I even sprinkled the money line. I, my bit better play was the points. I, I didn't even put that much on the money line, but I thought it was possible. Cause I thought they reminded me of Stanford and, and yeah. uh, a couple other teams that, that Arizona had faced when it was Wazoo. Clemson's a fun story, man. As much as I know you fucking hate the ACC, dude. I like, hate Clemson. I hate the ACC, but it, I, I hate, hate Clemson, Clemson too. They're being little bitches trying to leave the ACC them. now, but, uh, but it's a fun team. They're a veteran team. This is what college basketball. This is why I love college hoops. You see a team like this where how many of these guys are playing in the NBA? None. None. It, None. It, yeah. It, 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 and honestly, I don't know if I've talked about this. One one of my good friends is on staff at Clemson. He was a Dobo at South Carolina when we went to the Final Four. Now he's at Clemson when Frank got fired, so he went right to the rival um, when he needed a job. He needed a job, so Brad Brownell took him in, and they were on the hot seat. He's like, I don't know if we're going to be here. And Brad Brownell, how about that story? That like that's well, you, actually that's a that's a guy I can root for. Good me too, me right too. Now. But you, you, you know who yeah. saved his ass a little bit was Dabo. Dabo's like yes. good friends with him. Yes. So when they thought about firing him, it's like you don't want to piss off Dabo. With, yeah. You know he'll take the Alabama job. <laughs> so yeah, like <laughs> like it, it, it helped. But then it's like a blessing in disguise because you're having this magical run that you haven't had. Now even they're better when, than football. <laughs> even when Rick Barnes was there, yeah. Well, you know my my. This is why we got to take them against Alabama, yeah, right? Is yeah. because they're Alabama worse at football. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. That's what I'm saying. It fit fits my narrative perfectly. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a seminar about this. But uh, shout out to Clemson. That game was fun to watch, dude. How about the fucking coaching out of timeouts? Brunel, fucking oh my god, boys. dude! Fuck it was like every Arizona. everyone was open for a dunk. Arizona, I Tommy Lloyd. Let's talk about this for a second. You uh, killed we, Deb Boyle, fucking Tommy Lloyd. My God. Well, Tad, well, Tad Boyle's not at Arizona. I think the pressure is yeah. stronger at Arizona. Yeah, true. The, they spend more on, on, on basketball, but we, we were partying shout out to David and, and a bunch of his friends uh, in Vegas. We're at Circa hanging out with a bunch of Arizona fans and they got to be furious. They got to be absolutely like, they should I, is, be. is next year a make or break year for Tommy Lloyd? He'll get at least one more after that. He's yeah, going in the Big Twelve, think. so it's like a, it's a transition year. It, it'll now they're going to have players though next year, and they're they should compete. I mean, they should do what Houston did this year, where they come in, they compete, they should be a three or four seed in the tournament if they're really good at two or one seed. But the problem hasn't been November to February, March. Exactly, they've been a fucking one or two seed. They can't get by the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, it's like Sean Miller era 2.0. Yeah, couldn't yeah. get out of the first round last year. I mean, yeah, I I know the one off, but failures in March. That's gonna 
it's got to change. I agree with Mac that it's going to be a, you got one year to figure your shit out. Well, the reason why I mentioned this is I know Arizona's in debt, but they just hired a new athletic director and Hey, new AD. I don't, I don't know. I I, I don't know if I ever believe that colleges don't have money. (laughs) Yeah. I remember like, they're like UCLA's had a negative somewhat deficit. They had to join the big 10. I was like on UCLA's campus in the past, like, or like two weeks before that story. And I was like, nah, they got a bunch of money. Fuck you. I'm like, I, I fucking see this. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Like I understand that they might be handling it stupid, but if they needed to find money, there's money here. There's money here. You know what I mean? Um, I haven't been to Arizona's campus, but I assume that they oh, it's have gotta hidden, be nice as fuck. I haven't they, been there. Either. They have to have hidden money. They have. I just don't. I don't believe in it. I don't believe that you're that much in debt. Um, college is a hustle, dude. I mean, I love college sports, but come on, try 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 reselling a fucking textbook. All right, try reselling a fucking textbook when you're in. Hey, I gotta pay three hundred dollars for this fucking textbook. Oh, I get to the first class and my professor tells me he's not. He doesn't believe in the textbook. Oh, let me just resell it. Uh, I was here a day ago. I bought this textbook for three hundred dollars. Yeah, we're gonna quote you at fourteen dollars. Oh, perfect! <laughs> Fucking perfect! You know, I never opened this book. It's brand new. Remember me? I was here yesterday. Yeah, I understand, but this is our process. Fourteen dollars. Fuck you. This Fuck sounds you. like an ECU yeah. story. Bro. Oh, this happens. This happens, man. And a UCLA story. I took some classes at UCLA for screenwriting. That's a, that's a bitch too. Um, you, you you don't have my sympathy. I'll put it like that. When you say you're broke, fuck you. You know what I, I mean? I yeah. rented my books. So it was it was the one the one time fee rent and it was cheaper. So then I would return it. I would get half of it back if it was in good shape and I was good to go. Yeah. So. Still a hustle. It's a fucking complete hustle. Um anyway. All right, let's start picking some games. We've been talking. We've been talking. That's our that's um, the best part about our show though, is when we're I don't talking. know, because I get 30 DMs about you guys just get to the winners. You guys just get to the winners. Well, I'll be honest. I got my ass kicked the past two days. The only thing that saved me is the pussy pack, the the pussy pack and Clemson on the money line. It's the only thing that really saved me. (laughs) Mac asked asked us out in Vegas. uh, You know, you guys came to the bar at the win with me and Jared. And he asked me specifically, what brought you guys to the show consistently? And I told him, I'm like, you know, there's, there's talking sports and you guys, you know, did uh, TCE and SGPN does a really good job of covering sports, but it's it's the banner outside of that. And I think there's a lot of people in the chat that I talk with that that that's really what keeps people here. And uh, don't 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 ever change that. I mean, don't ever get away from that shit. I think people really like it. Hey, well, th- well, thank you, buddy. And uh, look, how many whiskeys are you down? No, I'm fucking around. Uh, no, <laughs> one, I, I, one and a half. I I, I appreciate that, man. Seven look, and a half. I, I really care. <laughs> about the sport. I care about the fucking people, man. When I ran into you and you asked that, you know, I, 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 you, you're like, can I get on the show? Like, you know, I, I think maybe in, and in, in, at least from my side of it, and you can speak for yourself. I think you might've said like, what's it like in my mind, I was like, what does it take to get on the show? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm I think- like, I hit me up, hit me up. You know what I mean? Let's go. Specifically, uh, I was like, yeah. you know, what did you guys do to get into the space? And you told me about you and Sean's, you know, how, how everything Stand came up to and be. everything. And, yeah, yeah. Right. And I don't know. I just think people really enjoy that aspect of the show instead yeah. of just pick games, get off the, get the fuck off the air. Well, dude, we're, we're grateful for the platform that we have, but I, and I, and I think I speak for Mac, Mac, if not, you can tell me to shut the no. fuck up, but, um, <laughs> Uh, we, we, we are grateful for the platform we have, but we're regular people. And, you know, I don't, I, I'm a fan first. Yeah. I'm a fan of the sport first. And I never want that to be different. You know, I never want to be, well, I feel like when you watch TV and you watch, you know, some, or listen to uh, maybe some other podcasts, there's a disconnect there. I don't think they know the pulse of the fan. Uh, uh, it was evident in the Filipowski shit to me. It was evident in the Filipowski shit when everyone was reacting. I was like, "Are they? They don't know what their product is," yeah. in my opinion. And uh, I'm glad we could fill that void. But I, 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 and I'm grateful. And 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 you know, it's so cool to meet up with people and, and be able to to share the the same love for 
gambling and, and college sports and, and whatever, whatever sport really. Cause I subscribe to the UFL gambling podcast. Uh, but Mac, uh, the, uh, God. I, so Rob no? just pointed it out in, in the live chat. He goes, Colby's just a regular person with a crooked ass. <laughs> yes. Holy yes. Yes. Today, yes. It looks really Not bad. Again. Today Not again. <laughs> Look at that. And shout out to really FBI tugboat. Today. One of my, one of my, straight. yeah, dude, it's all check us out. You want to make it straight? I mean, go, but go back to no, there, go there back go. to it. Okay. Go back okay. to it. Go back it. All right. All right. Straight. <laughs> Look straight. That's what I'm saying. On straight. Boom. Yeah, Jets football all right. up there, though. <laughs> uh, yes. And shout out to FBI tugboat. He's the fucking man too. And I've never met up with him in Vegas. Every every time we 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 say we're gonna meet up, we never meet up. But anyway. Who gives a fuck about our fucking reconnecting or connecting? Uh, let's talk some winners. All right. Let's talk some winners. Uh, we have games tomorrow. No. Yeah, and, and like I said, UFL gambling podcast for the morning. It's an hors d'oeuvre. All right. Hop on over there. We're giving you some fucking winners. Uh, Cody, I saw you were in there checking it out, but three o'clock. We got to wait three o'clock to college basketball. It's a good thing. We have what? Uh, 20 other sports going on. Place my first bet on fucking NASCAR today. Um, Illinois is taking on Yukon. Yukon's laying nine and a half. It's in the bean. Uh, I'll take Yukon. I, there's a, there's a, there's a train coming <laughs> and I've been getting in front of that train a little bit <laughs> and it is, it has punched me in the fucking dick. All right. And I can tell you I'm done getting in front of the train. Maybe I do think this though, if I throw out my wager, I do think Illinois has some athleticism on the offensive side of the ball that no one in the big East has. And I went through UConn schedule and I go, I don't know that they face an offense this good with this much talent. But then I think about Brad Underwood and his fucking super soaker and his goggles. And I go, God damn it. Give me UConn minus the points. I can't, I cannot take Illinois here. Mac, what are you doing? Uh, I'll, I'll take the Illini. Um, to cover, I think UConn wins, gets it back, back to back Final Fours. I want to compare Illinois to Marquette, it, but we never got to see UConn versus Marquette really, other than the one in stores. But we never really got to see the adjustments when Kolick was healthy because he never played the second and third game. I think Illinois is able to keep this. It's a track meet, and uh, I'll take the points. I, I think it'll be a five or six point win for UConn. They're not going to cover every game. I keep saying that though. So yeah, give me the points. Of <laughs> wow. Uh, Cody, what are you doing here, man? Shannon. UConn's won 12 straight tournament games by double digits <laughs> to record. And I yeah. think they do it here. I'm taking UConn minus the eight and a half. Yeah. I think we got to jump on that. And uh, I think it's just uh, until, until they prove me otherwise. I understand the angles. Like I, in my head, I was like trying to concoct a plan. I was basically going to the San Diego state route. And I was like, well, Illinois got three or four guys create their own shot. I don't think they've seen athleticism like this. And then I thought about, like I said, the locker room, I thought about Illinois defense and I go, yeah, well, Dan, it's in Boston. It's in fucking Boston. That's another good angle. Yeah. I think the Boston angle is, if this was in, you know, if this was in Tulsa, I would say, Oh, I think I'd probably be taking Illinois, but uh, yeah. Do you think uh, Coleman Hawkins brings out clinging or clinging cling cling? Maybe? Yeah, he can make shots. He, he, draws make him shots. Away? he made he made some shots the other he, night. He it's can just, also get teased though. Yeah, he can he also can get all, teased. I feel like if a little momentum yeah. with the crowd behind him could get a little get a little interesting. But yeah, to your yeah, point, that's, that's fair. That's going to be the real interesting part. Colby mentioned the crowd right. also kind of tipped that the iceberg a little bit. It's it's a thin skinned Illinois team yeah. on the road basically um i'm with yukon here uh mainly because i do feel like this illinois run's been also you know, like at times kind of fluky as well like oh, michigan fan it, i mean i i had them to win the regular season in the big 10 and they let me down um oh, michigan fan they they've got to play defense i i don't see anybody stopping clinging down low uh, especially like just the the sets that UConn can run. They've got plenty um, that will open up either uh, clinging through uh, the pick and roll stuff, ball screen stuff. I 
Coleman's not going to be able to stop that. No. Um, can I ask you an honest question though? Shoot. When's the last time you shot a super soaker at another grown man with your shirt off? Uh, actually, I know the answer to this question. What? Uh, senior year of high school. I don't know about grown men. No, it's you weren't grown a grown man. man. You weren't but a grown man. Yeah, not, not <laughs> grown man. But water wars, dude. That's huge here in Michigan. High schools. Senior water, year. Water, senior water wars. I what saw the Cos- I saw Tuesday the Cosner movie. It's, I saw the Cosner movie. It was all right. It's all right? like everywhere, not in school. So like not on public, uh, not on private property, and you're playing like against school friends uh basically like water gun wars basically <laughs> if you get sprayed you're out and it's a week-long thing it's in a bracket starts in march ends in like may it, it's fun what? it's just for seniors that have basically already checked out I'm from Indiana, of, and i've never heard of this shit you, a lot of guys, high schools in my area do this like, may, I re- right? may, I, may i recommend something shoot may I, you should tell your kids this noah Try getting pussy when you're uh, that that age. <laughs> that that to me, if you put that same energy into getting pussy, I think you'd be a lot more successful. Um, anyway, um, enough. Th- there's a different style of water wars in uh, in 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 that world. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> we have another people game going asking, on. People are asking what the cocktail napkin says on this game. Um, the cocktail napkin says this one is eight and a half. So pretty much right on the number. Fair. Uh, Jerry Davis says, how the fuck do you, uh, hold on. How the fuck do you uh, pick it winners of the UFL? We, we, we know who's on the roster because we're plugged in. We got a whole fucking spreadsheet and everything. Get on over there. Subscribe to the UFL game. When you podcast. got a guy named Justin Mark. Yeah. Like he's deep in the weeds of Iowa. Yeah. He's connected. He's taking he was, phone. Yeah. He was really good today. I watched you and uh, CJ and J Mark, and he was really, really good. Shout J-Mark, out, shout baby. out, J Mark, man, he's a great guy. J-Mark Check Moses. out the old fashioned football podcast. Um, but uh, NFL show. yeah, NFL gambling podcast. Sorry, sorry, I'm I'm, I'm a bad version of Don King. I don't uh, know if I'll but, be back with these new yeah. kickoff rolls though. TBD. Oh my god, <laughs> I wouldn't be back. I'd be out. <laughs> <laughs> I am out. The NFL died last week, folks. I don't know if you know that there was a funeral. It was on its way to death. We, 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 we saw they were it's a paraplegic with like, they, they had everything going in their way of death in my opinion, but it solidified it last week. I think, I think, I think you guys all know what I'm talking about. Check me, me on Twitter at the Colby D Clemson, Alabama. What the hell? It's a football game. Roseville. No. <laughs> what? What's going on here? In LA. Uh, do they have a do they have a dude that looks like a chick like Trevor Lawrence? No, they don't. I don't think. But uh, uh, Ian Shefflin with that headband, kind of. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't say that to his face. Uh, yeah, Clemson <laughs> plus three and a half. I wouldn't either, Noah. So it's not only you, but I didn't say it. Uh, Clemson is uh, is getting three and a half, and uh, they're plus one thirty. They won in Tuscaloosa. It's a revenge game for Roll Tide. <laughs> Crazy game. No. You know, you know what? What sells me? Everything North Carolina didn't do. Clemson does it naturally. They're 230th in pace in the nation. That yeah. is going to limit possessions for Alabama. That's going to make them feel uncomfortable. Clemson is the way less athletic team here. So it is risky because if Alabama gets going, it, it could be tricky, but I, I trust Clemson. I think the system watching those plays out of fucking out of the uh, timeouts and shit too. Like I'm buying into Brad Brownell, knowing a little thing or two about a thing or two. Um, I am concerned about the rebounding. Alabama's <laughs> rebounding is very good, Yeah. Um, but I don't really believe that Alabama's is good. I believe they had a great bracket. Clemson to me has proven to me that they're good. I thought grand Canyon was overrated. I thought Charleston didn't belong in the NCAA tournament. And I thought North Carolina gave him a win. Give me Clemson money line. Mac, what are you doing here? It, I mean, like you said, man, it's a, uh, it's a Rose bowl <laughs> Dabo versus Saban. Tua versus Lawrence. No, we're playing basketball in LA. Um, 
Clemson is on a historic three-point defense run. Uh, New Mexico, 3-23. Baylor, 6-24. Arizona, 5-29. Um, so I, 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 both sides going right now. I keep fading Clemson. They keep winning. But I keep taking Bama, and they keep covering. I'm going back to the well. Bama revenge angle. Roll tide. Roll the year after the year. They get to the final four. They cover. They make their threes tomorrow. I like this tide team. I like the way that they're playing. They're going to get it done. Roll tide. Roll. All right. Like it. A little, little shit talking rights. Let's go. Uh, Beanie, Great what are you game. doing here? Great game. Shout out. Shout out the two tips. Uh, the two tips that just came through. Deuce a trip life goes fade Bama. 10 bucks there. Thank you very much. And then Tommy B also says super soaker is a form of masturbation. I saw that. One. <laughs> one of I saw for that. Maybe, uh, maybe that's this... what's happening in that locker room with his shirt off. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite bet of the elite eight. I'm going Clemson. I like it on the money line too. Um, they already won in Tuscaloosa. Um, but this just, I mean, we've seen this game play out three times already. New Mexico loves to run. I, I If I'm copying any of Colby's handicap, let me know. New Mexico loves to run, loves to shoot the three ball. Um, Baylor loves to run, loves to shoot the three ball. Arizona loves to run. They're good at shooting the three ball. Um, and they were forcing up a ton of forced shots. Uh, I think a lot of the same happens here against Alabama. So give me the Tigers here on the money line. I think when you look at some of the teams and I'm, I'm quickly doing some of this now, but there does seem to be a clear uh, pace thing that Alabama struggles with. Yeah. I mean, uh, I also Clemson was a dog in all three games and they're here. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but if you look at, uh, if you just look at some of the pace matchups, the teams that, are slower in pace have fucked with Alabama this year, whether it's Ohio state, whether it's Purdue, whether it's, whether it's this Clemson team, they have given them problems to me. I think that's the best part of the handicap. Cody, what are you doing here? I think you laid it out pretty good. Um, I honestly think Alabama's the more athletic team. I think they're the more, talented team i think sears i agree is, i agree i think sears is going to have his way with whoever wants to try and check him but at the end of the day if this game's played in the 60 high 60s low 70s hell low 60s i think clemson gets it done and they're catching points i think pj hall is a matchup problem i think um I mean, Clemson nine and one is a dog this year says cat whisper i'm sorry continue cody no you're good i just I want to take Alabama with the points or laying the points, but I just think this this is a Clemson run that I think continues to roll. Um, I'm with you guys. At least they cover, if not on the money line. Yeah, I, I think the money line is live there. I, they just have to stay true to me to maximizing, to me, draw out the game. This is a Tony Bennett style. Like maybe your defense isn't pack line defense like Tony Bennett, but milk every fucking possession. Exactly. That's I think it's an it easy to blueprint to beating Alabama. With that, now you still have to be talented enough to, to to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball, not get in foul trouble with your 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 elite players, stuff like that. But uh, uh, I I also just think you know I I kind of believe like like you said, Alabama is the more talented roster, but to me they're not the better team. I think yeah. Clemson's the better team, uh, so I'm taking the Tigers there. Uh, How great is it that we're gonna have Brad Brunell or Nate Oates in the Final Four? It is hilarious. We're guaranteed one of those two. Good for them. Uh, at, yeah, I mean, only one of them. Only one of them. Uh, you know, ignored a a, a homicide uh, last year. But uh, it's the okay. year after the year, roll yeah. tide roll. Yeah, crime pays. Crime pays. Yeah. I try to tell you on this podcast, crime pays. Really, um, you're after does. the murder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing like. I love how we really need to do. The national media didn't cover that good enough. No. Like no. Nate Oates, Nate Oates's press conference acting like they were the victim. I'm like, wait, there's a woman that's dead. You fucking asshole. What are you? I can't believe you guys are coming at me like this. What are you talking about? 
Was well, playing him, you know. He's, I get it, and I understand. Miller's a good kid. Well, I understand. Like you want to no. rep for your boy, but at the same time, it's like he made him seem like. And you guys are coming at me, and I'm like, "Well, dude, shut the fuck up. Someone's <laughs> life is gone. You're 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 on a pity party over here. There's a funeral being held three blocks away. You fucking jackass. But anyway, anyway, um, it just I find that. Uh, that was I couldn't believe that they didn't make a more of a mockery of that because it, it should have been. Um, Sunday's action: Elite Eight, Tennessee, Purdue. Ooh. This is a game. Yeah. Um, Second and third best team. Man, this is a this. Is, I think Tennessee could fuck with them, but I said that about every team. I said that about Gonzaga. Who who was it before that? I said that. I said Utah State, great Osabar. Yeah. He can do it. He can come. Yeah. He he can take him down. But I was on Purdue in the opening round. Um, you got this at three and a half. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah. What do you what are you are you seeing elsewhere? No, 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 no. I was just okay. making sure. I think the Vols are going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Great. I think the Vols are going to do it. You're, I don't know what. <laughs> This you're is too betting big. on Rick. You're betting on Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes exactly. He made the final four once. Matt Painter's never made a final four. <laughs> now, to be fair, Rick Barnes has been in the tournament 28 times. I think Painter's only been like 10. So yeah. there is something there. But I will take the Vols to cover the three and a half. Maybe Purdue wins, and maybe I middle this thing, you know. But <laughs> I kind of think I—I'm pretty sure I'm going to drink myself in the well plus one forty money line play for the Vols. <laughs> uh, Mac, am I a fucking idiot? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> I yes, even, even even Noah, the fucking big Purdue fan. This is a this is going to be a game, and. If anybody remembers the game in fucking Hawaii, it was a foul fest. So it was, it was a debacle. If they let them play, which I think they will on short rest, I like Tennessee. If they fucking call foul fest, Purdue probably pulls away, makes the free throws, wins by seven. But I think they let him play. Give me Tennessee. Rick Barnes going to the final four, his second all time. Let's go. (laughs) Rocky top. Let's go. Come on. And, and wait Rocky. a second. If he goes to the final four, he's getting NC State or Duke. <laughs> he's gonna go to the championship. What baby. the they're gonna win the national championship. They're gonna beat UConn. <laughs> I mean you're gonna think it's fucking Pat Summit versus Gino, Gino whatever his fucking name is. Yeah, yeah, whatever the fucking guy uh, is. Uh Noah, are you still back in your you are you still boiling up? Yeah, uh, because it's in Detroit. Uh, that that is a main reason why I'm taking like Purdue he's here. He's repping Detroit like he's fucking Axel Foley over here, here tonight. Yeah, uh, not as many as Purdue though. Like that that building was Tennessee about to come fans off. fucking the, travel, the dude. They don't give off. a shit where it's at. My, Tennessee my only fans hope, will travel. My only hope is that they don't leave for Easter. That's that's my only only hope here because I, I do think this is going to be a close game. And Mac mentioned it the the previous one in November. This is the one that was kind of uh, just it was everybody was screaming Watch. from the get go that the refs were just fucking terrible from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, they never really gave Tennessee a chance. I think Tennessee had like fourteen fouls in that first half, and it was brutal uh, and unwatchable, honestly. Because Tennessee uh, wanted I to mean, play bully ball and the refs didn't let them. So I think they're once again going to try to do that. Uh, and I, by the way that the game kind of went today, I think they'll let them play. Um, because I hope so. Like the 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 the, the, the ticky tack shit really didn't get called today, in my opinion. That everybody were all up in arms about previously uh, in the Big Ten tournament and. First weekend. Uh, He's talking about an ED fucking early. I was about to say, it was like the most pivotal play in the game. No, no, no. I'm saying like in the lane when ED's going. That was in the lane, though. No, no, no. Like that was after when he had landed on him. The, the, the first part or whatever, that was not ED had the ball going into the driving in the lane. Okay. That's my point. Like there wasn't many of those today. Um, and I, I think they'll let them play. Uh, it's going to be close. 
I got Purdue though. They're they're the team. Team of destiny. Per destiny. Choo choo. Cody, uh, I, I know you're from the fine state of Indiana, so uh, I expect you. Are you a Hoosier? First off, who's your who's your team growing up? Go blue. I need to, I need to know this information. Go blue. Go blue. I'm a Michigan fan. Okay. Oh God. I'm a Michigan fan. Um, Damn it! I didn't realize friends. I was doing this setting up. <laughs> Tag all right, team. you're off. Yeah, canceled. <laughs> are you wearing, you wearing khakis right now, like Harbaugh, like Harbaugh style khakis. Um, uh, I got blue jeans on, but I will rock the khakis <laughs> for Jim Harbaugh. Broke okay, my heart so, he left. Wait, wait. So you're not a okay? That's good though that you're not because I thought maybe you'd be an IU fan or a Purdue fan. So you were looking at this with no, no, no. you know okay, okay. All so my friends were IU and Purdue fans. I know both teams very well. Um, Mike Woodson sucks. Matt Painter's better than Mike Woodson, but that's not saying much. <laughs> that's a fact. Um, I think not, Purdue, not a basketball though. <laughs> I think uh, unless Dalton Connect comes out with one of his just I'm that guy kind of game, I think Purdue win. I think Purdue covers this game. I honestly do. I don't think they have an answer for Zach Eady. Like I said earlier, I think Lance Jones is a difference maker, even though I think Tennessee has some guys to match up. And we didn't talk about Braden Smith earlier. He had 14 points and 15 assists today. Yeah. There's only five point guards since 2000 that's had 15 assists in an uh, NCAA tournament game. So I think there's a lot of guys that get slept on on this Purdue team. I think Lawyer's good. Um, Mason Gillis is a upperclassman there. He, I just he had some big shots today, too. Yeah, and I just think they've got a lot of – I think they got some dogs. Up. This is not the same Purdue team that it's been two, three years ago. And I think Lance Jones changed uh, the dynamic of the team. And, of course, Zach Eady, even if they let them play, I don't think Tennessee – I know their center's good. I can't think of his name right now. But, I mean, the dude's fucking 7'4". He weighs 310 pounds. Like, what do you do with that for 40 minutes? So, I just, I just think Tennessee keeps it close. Um, Purdue pulls away at the end because of free throws. Fair. That was that was the other thing when he said Dalton connect. It kind of spurred the memory for me. He was battling cramps that weekend too in Maui. Uh, that first game against Syracuse, he cramped up. Also was battling it against Purdue and Kansas there. So, um, yeah, interesting. Also, um, uh, shout out to Jay Rothstein, and I, I this bothers me because every time I fall for this trap. He's right. Clemson beat Alabama in Canada and got, they need to fucking find a way to fix this on the schedule. Wait, because no, no, they, beat no, that Tuscaloosa. wasn't Tuscaloosa. That wasn't Tuscaloosa. Who beat they Bama? Beat, in, they beat TCU. Purdue uh, beat Bama in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't Tuscaloosa. I remember watching the game. Yeah. They yeah, beat it him was in Tuscaloosa. I'm they sorry. Were... For a second. I thought he had a point. Cause I was like, I have no, found no. myself this year though. I was my my point of bringing that up was, and it was inaccurate for this particular game now. But in general, I hate going to like ESPN's website and you see an away game when it was fucking like a neutral site game in Hawaii. You know what I mean? Like so, then you, you you're in your head, you're quoting this. I go on like other shows, like oh they won it there, and I was like, you know, it's a long fucking season. So for, forgive me if I forget where the fucking the 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 home game was. But um, you, you you pull it up to to be factual. But I was like, yeah, can we fix that? It's not hard to do. Just put a little quotations. <laughs> put where the fuck the game is at, and it helps all of us. All right. Yeah. I mean, do they not throw back about thirty whiskeys a night? No, <laughs> clearly not. Um, uh, yeah, that game's awesome. That game has me really uh, interested in that. But yeah, that uh, Clemson actually won in Alabama, though. I remember watching the game. Now that we think about it. Um, NC State Duke Pussy Pack, Pussy Pack taking on Blue Devils, back a road. Um, Duke's Blue. laying six and six and a half. Again, let's let's talk about this because we had the first matchup, round four, right? The first round matchup four. was when it was, uh, I think, in what late January, early February. I think it was. So they lost to Duke 79 64. No, all of it was Wait, no, this uh, is only round no, three. This is round, only three. Round, three. round three, but round, round three. three in three weeks. Yeah, from March 4th. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, get the fuck out of here. 
I'm taking NC State in the points. The <laughs> Pussy Pack are a team of destiny. I know that I'm gonna have to read off all those hate messages to me. I just know it. Like NC State's live on the money line. We're stupid if we don't take that. We have to take the money line. Yeah, like Duke just beat the the one seed too, so it's a letdown spot. NC State is playing with house money, in my opinion. Give me NC State. Give me NC State on the fucking money line. <laughs> Senior football says first time I agree with this guy. All right, that's first fair. Time. Just hit that like and hit the subscribe button and see if I give a fuck. Uh, Matt, <laughs> what are you doing I'll, here? I'll take one for the team, my man. Um, give me Duke. Duke didn't make any shots tonight. I'll lay the points. Last time I did this in the final lead eight game was with Texas, and I mushed the hell out of them. So I'm hoping <laughs> I'm mushing the hell out of Duke. Give me the Dukies. Lay the points. I'm not. I will not give everybody the satisfaction of us all taking NC State. Duke, lay the number. Let's go. Come on, Dukey. You guys should kill NC State. Let's go. Lay the points. Go, Duke. Go. Let's go. Duke. I mean, it really is served up great for the Shire legacy they to be built. Them. They should. To they be should. built. Final four appearance. Yes. yes. And what if they're playing Tennessee? <laughs> oh, they might make it, man. That's what I'm saying. They might make it. My, my fucking that. head's going to explode. Uh, <laughs> What I'm are not, you doing? I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not letting this happen. Give me Duke. Lay the points. Let's go, Duke. Let's go, Duke. Come no, on, in, Nick. Come no, on, Dukies. No, what are you doing here, buddy? This has been a very, very, very public, like, has raked tournament so far this season. Um, they had the the injury with Shed. Duke covers against Houston. They win the game. Uh, NC State also wins the game. Uh, both of those were heavy, heavy fe- uh, public tonight. Uh, and all chalk in the round of 32. It's the second game of the weekend. I think the chalk may rise to the top here, kind of like the cream. I'm going to be with Mac here. I'm going to take Duke. I'm going to lock this one up too. Uh, Cocktail Napkin has the Blue Devils minus nine. They're the one team that's not going to take NC State lightly. Uh, this is what you can call a revenge spot here because they're the ones that let this whole madness thing begin. Um, yeah. And I, I think the road stops before the Final Four for Cinderella. Um, so you disloyal, fool ass, bitch Devils. made punk. Uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I think the, the only thing on my mind, Gene, was pussy. You you pussy look at pack, pussy pack, pussy pack, pussy pack. Uh, you, you look at uh, Duke's second round game was uh, James Madison, and they were not favored by six. Wasn't it five? <laughs> what what were they favored by in that second round game against James, James Madison? Six and a half or six? Yeah, I thought it was in, six in and my, a half. In yeah. my head. That was a spot where they were trying to bring in money on the other side. Here, I, I feel like they're trying to balance the money. And to me, I think there's an edge on Duke. I think there's going to be a lot of people once again on NC State. Give me Duke. Well, I'm benedicting because yeah. I thought I'd be on Duke. I'd like, give me NC State. You think what? More yes, yes. you're benedicting? Yes. yes. Get I only here. did it so we wouldn't fucking mush it. This is oh. an ACC rivalry. Give me NC State. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Get out of here. The no only Phoenix. thing on my mind, Gene, was pussy. <laughs> uh, Let's go. Cody, Let's what go are we doing State. here? Be- before I pick, Noah, you think more people is going to be on NC State? No, plus- no. I, I think there's oh, going to be a lot of a lot of people that want to be. I think the most amount of people, the AKA public side, is going to be Duke here, of course. But Agreed. I think Agreed. they're trying to balance money because – there's a lot of people rooting for Cinderella. There is every single year. Um, that's going to be like a 60 40, where usually you don't quite get that with Duke. So, and I think I'm going to be part of the public or part of the, the, yeah, part of the public here and lay or go with the pussy pack plus six and a half. I just, I don't think that's a public, but yes, I know. No, I said, I get no against the public okay. and say, 
uh, the pussy pack plus six and a half. I just I want to see Cinderella make it. I don't think they have the better. Uh, I don't think they have the better roster, but there's something to this team, man. There's something to it. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna ride and die with them till they're out. The only thing on my mind, Gene, <laughs> was pussy. Mac, you usually have the numbers in front of you. Do you have them? Uh, NC State's actually public. Really? Yeah. So I like my side even more. Well, you well, that, have two days. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, it's I have, yeah. People usually don't bet until the day of the game. I mean, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of other bets to bet that's, on. That's when the Duke fans, the, Duke you know, gonna the, come in. the front runners come in on the day of a couple hours before. All that's right. And your public is going to come. I want to hit this before we, before we, uh, we leave. And I want to get your guys' best plays, but I just want to say, I really think the NIT line movement is going to change on Tuesday. It's crazy. So right now, bet the shit out of Seton Hall minus three and a half against Georgia in Hinkle, and bet the shit out of Indiana State, who will have the home crowd yeah. minus two against. And I might have moved from when a couple hours ago when me and CJ were doing the show. Minus two uh, against Utah. I actually think you should parlay that. I do not expect those numbers to be the same on Tuesday. So get in on that. Just wanted to throw that out there and get that on record. Um, let's uh, let's best play of the day or best play of the, the weekend. Maybe we should do, let's do a lock for each day. Um, my lock for Saturday is the Clemson Tigers plus three and a half. My lock for Sunday is NC State plus six and a half. Mac, what are you doing here? Um, I'm going to lock up the Illini. I think they're going to keep this one close. This will be the first one UConn wins but does not cover going in the Final Four. And give me Rocky Top. Give me Rocky Top to get it done over Purdue. Roll Tennessee, baby. Let's go. Rick Barnes. Phoenix, Clemson plus three for day one. I think they win that one on the money line. Uh, for day two, give me Duke. I think they uh, put an end to the madness. Cody? I'm battling Mac on both days. I think UConn gets it done on Saturday. And uh, I think Purdue fucks up Tennessee. If Edie, if Edie gets the calls that he has been getting all year, I think ten, or I think Purdue's going to fuck them up. Fuck Purdue. All right, folks. There we go. Uh, this has been fun. It's been fun talking. I miss uh, it was a day or two of not talking to you college basketball guys gals out there in the universe. And I, I miss it. And uh, I'm glad we'll be back. Should we do a show tomorrow night or Sunday? Let's do one after like, see, we you can see do how this one. works. We folks. Can, we talk about it on air. We can do it. Should we do, should we do a is, fucking show is, tomorrow or not? It is Easter. Yeah, it it's is, Easter. Uh, so let's, you want to do one Monday and then we preview the NIT games on Tuesday. Also recapping the elite eight games. Do Monday. Okay. Maybe. Turn on your notifications. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like, like hit that subscribe. 635 people in here. Uh, g- 255 give it up, on YouTube. Give it up for this fucking jackass. Give it up for my guy, <laughs> Cody Frazier. Look, we met Cody in Vegas. He was cool as fuck. And uh, yeah. He was the man and he was extremely knowledgeable. It wasn't just him over, over there buying us whiskey sodas or whatever. Whiskey, whiskey, gingers, whiskey, sa- whiskey sours. Yeah. Whiskey sours. There go. All right. Well, he doesn't uh, even remember what he was drinking. Yeah. That, you, that you, that ne- you never should. Time. You never exactly. should remember. Exactly. exactly. Uh, once again, I wasn't having water gun fights in fucking senior year. You fucking loser. Dude, All right. No, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, but uh, everyone give Cody a follow on Twitter at, at Hey, God damn it. Let me, exp- let me show this. All right. C C C F R A Z 15. There's a way to say it. I just never say it. It's not, I don't know how to say it correctly. Cody Frazier. He's the man, Cody. Uh, you got to come back on the show and, and, and talk hoops or, or something with this buddy. And I appreciate 
Uh, we we appreciate meeting you. We thought you were fucking cool as shit. Uh, we were on the Thank airplane you. back, and me and Kramer and Sean were saying that dude was cool as fuck. So there I'm we go. Man. Kramer yeah. said that when I was talking with Kramer, I was pretty fucked up. But I, I, I yeah. appreciate well, it. Kramer. Now that I think about it, he might have been half asleep. But yeah, <laughs> Sean, me and Sean said that, and I think he just goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sean just Sean thought yeah. you were a, a really sexy billboard for the the gambling. He did. Podcast. He did. He turned me into a meme. I, I I didn't know whether to be humble or uh, be a little embarrassed by it. I think it was no, a little of both. No, 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 no. Don't be embarrassed by it. Hey, Everyone's. No, no, I mean, you yeah. said it best. It was Vegas. I mean, that's what I'm saying, dude. I got fucked up. At least you were in like a comfortable fucking chair, in like a nice studio. Yeah, I yeah. can't say the same about myself in some situations team. in Las Vegas. Uh, folks, give Noah Beanick a follow on Twitter at NoahB77 underscore. Make sure you tweet him with your favorite water pistol. Um, <laughs> Moneyline Mac is on Twitter at Moneyline underscore Mac. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. If we look, if we if we don't record until Monday, which is a big if still. Have a wonderful fucking Easter, and we're grateful that you listened to us all this all this time. We just did a two hour show on like six games. So glad to see uh, you're still here rocking with us. Uh, I'm on Twitter at the Colby D and uh, yeah, the college basketball experience is on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Hit that follow button, subscribe, whatever the fuck. Enjoy life. All right. Enjoy life a little bit, folks. We'll be dead in a hundred years till next time. This is the college basketball experience. You better start thinking about yours. Ed, we out of here. I lost a bet on the Super Bowl. So I had to dive in and crawl around through the snow. Don't believe me? Believe me, there's a video. We made it to promote March 5th and then we did the show. Before March, there was a winter to be lived through. And snow fell on the D.C. metropolis. In some other cities, this wouldn't be big news. But where I live, it felt like an apocalypse. Not the kind where zombies are the wrath of God. But the kind where Mother Nature doesn't laugh at all. I didn't laugh at all. I saw the sky smoke in the front and I waited for the ash to fall. Traffic stalled for a few weeks. Capitol Hill and snow taking up a parking space. A couple notches on the beltway ain't unique. But higher than freezes get more than your heart to face. I mean, the rats were frostbitten. They lost it, risking their lives just to make it to the office. Exhausting, caustic, cold front rose up through the mid Atlantic and did its damage. Detective Bailey didn't expect a camera and brought a gun to a snowball fight. I know my rights in the season of mood swing. Some of us winning, some of us losing. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to lose. I lost my temper, but I found my center. Winning winter so I can stay warm with you. That broken clock's been blinking since winter. I hope it's not telling me I was born to lose. I lost my temper, but I found my center. Winning winter so I can stay warm with you. So I can stay warm.